you. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. It's The Onion Radio News. Hager physicists have created quantum slacks. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The stunning announcement that a team of Hager physicists has successfully developed quantum slacks was made this morning at a press conference in Philadelphia. According to Dr. Daniel Chang, head of the Hager team, conventional notions about the physical properties and possibilities of slacks have been turned on their heads. We are on the verge of unzipping the secrets of creation and peering into the pants of God himself. It appears the very fabric of the universe may well be a smart cotton twill weave. However, Chang urged caution in further research. After tests conducted last month at the Hager Pants Propulsion Collider Laboratory in Dallas suggested the possible existence of so-called anti-pants, which could, in theory, initiate a chain reaction resulting in no pants at all. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live on Sunday evening. It's a little bit rare for talk radio to be live on weekend nights, especially Sunday nights. But here we are. Free Talk Live is actually a seven night a week show. And if you want to prove that we're live, you can call in. Indeed, you can call us at 855-450-3733. And bring up anything that's on your mind. That's the other unique thing about Free Talk Live. Not only are we a a seven-night-a-week radio program from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, but we also let you call in and bring up anything that's on your mind. So you can do that, as Brian mentioned, at 855-450-3733. You can also use Skype to call in, and our Skype handle is lrn.fm. And with you tonight, I'm Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. I think we'd like to start out tonight talking about an article that appeared in Forbes related to the Free State Project. Now, what is the Free State Project? Uh, The elevator pitch, I guess you could say, is it's a group of liberty-loving people who pledged to move to New Hampshire um, to create a liberty-loving community in New Hampshire and get active to bring about more freedom in their lives, whatever that means to them. And all of us on this show have moved to New Hampshire because of the Free State Project. I've lived here for eight years and, uh, you know, done a lot of stuff. But I think I've uh, been I'm pretty happy with, uh, you know, the way I've adjusted my life to bring about more freedom for myself. Uh, What about you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Very happy uh, ever since moving to New Hampshire. Been here, boy, almost three years now. And uh, it's been great. There's always room for improvement. But I've learned over the past eight years that. I prefer to focus on the things that I can actually control. So like, who are the people that I spend time with? What is my job? What's my living situation? And try to get freedom in those areas, uh, financial freedom and, and so forth. So there are a lot of people in the Free State Project, and I think the original purpose of the Free State Project, it's fair to say, was kind of a political movement to yeah, bring I- about a movement of libertarians in New Hampshire to vote and put in governmental policies that are freer, However, that's really not been my experience of the Free State Project. I I did sort of experiment with politics when I first moved here, quickly realized that it was very um, energy draining. It didn't make me happy. So I, I stopped and I said, well, what else can I do? I certainly don't want to, you know, go to jail if I can help it because there were other people kind of doing that, getting arrested, going to jail, doing protests and things like that. That's not really my my thing, my style. And uh, so I found that focusing on the personal aspects of freedom has worked well for me. But there are definitely a lot of people who move to New Hampshire to do politics. And as far as that goes, Mark, you say, I know, you say that that's been successful. I'm having a hard time seeing the evidence for that. But what do you what are your arguments? What would you say are the arguments that New Hampshire has become politically freer in the last eight years? Well, I would say that, um, you know, there's marginal success in making people freer. You know, there's a situation where, um, you know, they've defended and fought off some expansion of laws. For instance, uh, New Hampshire is the politically freest place um, in America. There's you know, it's almost inarguable. So the yeah, fact that they that can hold a, the line. A lot of the attraction was that it was already pretty free rel- in relative terms. I mean, in, in New Hampshire, there's no sales tax and no income tax. That's a huge thing that impacts people's lives. And then you go from there where whether you want to talk about 
you know, the gun restrictions, if that's important to you, or the seatbelt laws, that they, they, they don't have them. Um, Income and, you tax, know, sales tax. I don't particularly, those are not really things that I think impact my life so much in terms of freedom. But, you know, it's it's nice to sort of just be in a place where the perhaps the culture is more in line with leave people alone, trust people to run their own lives instead of getting the government involved and trying to control everything they do. I well, think the biggest success for the political types, um, you know, here in New Hampshire is, is that the libertarian veto has been achieved. There are 80 about 80 people in the New Hampshire House, and that's about 20 percent. It's one of the largest legislative bodies in the world, 400 representatives representing 1.4 million people. It's a relatively small state with a very large large legislature. And 80 of those people are rated by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance as 80 percent or higher on a liberty list. So the fact is, is if you want to get your conservative bill or your liberal bill through the legislature, it has to go through this libertarian acid test, meaning that it's that much harder to get your legislation through now than it used to be. On a personal level, I would say that I feel like it's easy to live in New Hampshire and ignore politics. Like, I, <laughs> I think you can. You really can go here and kind of, in a lot of ways, be left alone if that's what you want to do. You can also go here and um, be surrounded with a community who's likely likelier to share your values than the average Joe. You Indeed. know, whether it's locals who kind of already believe in liberty or whether it's people who have moved to New Hampshire because of the Free State Project. I think that's, that's the a, best part of it. Uh, that's all. a big selling point, the, the community. And we've talked about this a lot on the show, so we don't need to rehash it. But what was this article that came out in Forbes recently about the Free State Project? Tell yeah. me more about that. It's from Kashmir Hill, and I'm just going to start with it. because She's it's... into Bitcoin, too, so mm -hmm. she's maybe a, a little bit leaning towards the liberty side or at least interested in she's that interested. from a journalistic perspective. She says, long before billionaire venture capitalist Peter Thiel dreamed up the idea of floating libertarian, a floating libertarian island nation, a 24-year-old Yale grad student named Jason Sorens proposed a far more down-to-earth experiment for those who wanted to live the limited government lifestyle, that a critical mass of freedom-loving people establish residence in a small state and take over the state government. The Free State Project, called to action, was in 2001. By 2003, 5,000 people agreed to take part, and they held a vote to decide which low-population state would be uh, the staging ground for the libertarian vision. Now, I'd like to point out that two states were eliminated from uh, the—you uh, would think it would be the, te uh, the 10 least populous states from which they voted, but it was not. It was the 12 least populous states removing Hawaii and uh, Rhode Island because they decided that Rhode Island was too corrupt and Hawaii was too far gone as far as uh, huh. the government went. <laughs> so um, that's what they did, regardless of what you have to say about that. Wonderful weather there in Hawaii. So anyway, the uh, in uh, going on with where I was, what the, to see which uh, low population state it would be for this uh, the proving ground for the but libertarian v invasion. By the way, uh, this <laughs> I, you, could, uh, you could quibble with that phrasing for yeah. sure, but it's not that crazy of an idea because if you look at certain other population movements, which I think are cited in Jason Sorens's paper about yep. this, that he originally proposed the Free State Project, you know, you look at Mormons moving to Utah, they've undoubtedly, 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 <laughs> they've definitely without had, a doubt, without a doubt, <laughs> had an influence on the culture of Utah. Hippies in Vermont, um, Quakers in Pennsylvania. Wait, you, I love hippies, by the way. It's I, wonderful. Hippies come to New Hampshire. Please. Yeah, right on. <laughs> no doubt about I might it. Be one a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a funny thing because a lot of people complain, or not a lot, I should say, there are people that complain about the influx of libertarians into New Hampshire. Uh, but it's ironic when it's in the same exact area that the Pilgrims essentially landed in to get away from oppressive areas uh, you know that 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 they were trying to get away from mm. and yet nobody seems to complain about that uh, because they certainly came in and took over uh, an area from people that were already there and by the way there is a silent but deadly migration of people coming from Massachusetts where actually I I used to live in Massachusetts so I know about this phenomenon there's a there's a huge migration of people coming from Massachusetts to New Hampshire who don't really have they want lower taxes, but they don't really have like a strong philosophical opposition. They kind of want to have their cake and eat it too, i.e. big them. government programs Some without pay, having to pay for it. And so they come to New Hampshire and, you know, uh, 
bring ideas of collectivism with them. Oftentimes, those are the ones that complain about us moving, uh, new, free staters moving to New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the reality is New Hampshire has a lot of immigrants. If you if it you want to if you want to call it that right yep. people who come from other states and then migrate to New Hampshire carpet baggers no, <laughs> well you know when, when more than half of the population is from wasn't born in the state yeah. you you get this sort of uh, phenomenon where one in early on in the conversation you'll find out whether or not the person's moved or whether they um they're from here so mm-hmm. oftentimes they'll broadcast that they're from here when they moved here and that kind of thing and it's just it's some How kind of litmus test. How long do you have to have lived in New Hampshire to be from here? Do you have to it, be longer born? than the person you're talking talking to? Yeah, that's really it. I mean, it's kind of an <laughs> it's kind of an arbitrary because thing. when those people talk, oh my my family's been here three generations. Oh, my family has a patent land patent from the king, right? I mean, <laughs> I wa- I watched this happen. <laughs> I wow. watched it happen. I'm like, well, you lose. He's got a <laughs> land patent from the king. <laughs> I think that's what you call a big willy waving contest. It indeed is. <laughs> that but man go- waved a big willy. What do you want? <laughs> It's king-sized. <laughs> this is indeed. So anyway, the, this move will be triggered at 20,000 people. And at this point, the Free State Project is just an idea where people sign up on the internet and say, oh, yeah, I love this. But once the 20,000 number is reached, and I suspect we'll be somewhere between 16,000 and 17,000. Um, yeah, pretty close. It's, my, it's usually, that's, that's, that's what I recall it in my It was over 75%. Uh, several months ago, so it's only probably gone up from there. Sorry, it's 15,738. And so once 20,000 is reached, and I like, and I think that'll likely be next year, then they've, there's a five-year window for which people can begin moving to New Hampshire. Yeah. Now, some of these people, these 15,700 people, are dead. You know, some of them... Perhaps. Some of them aren't going to remember signing. They're not going to be interested in moving anymore because the statement of intent says, I intend to move. But... Your intentions change in your life, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And but I think there's a there's a hidden number that people don't account for though, because yeah, perhaps some of those twenty thousand signatures onto the Free State Project, I will move to New Hampshire if nineteen thousand nine hundred and ninety nine other people do too. How many people are going to be attracted to New Hampshire who never signed up for the Free State Project, who just heard about it because the move has been triggered, or because New Hampshire turns into such a free market paradise or, or whatever relative to the other states, how many people are going to be drawn to New Hampshire who don't even know about it right now once the move is triggered? So I think that'll offset any bad signatures or whatever. And, uh, you know, I don't think I'm, Jason Sorens himself, the founder, the founder of the Free State Project, said that 20,000 is a high number anyway. And the fact is people are moving right now. You know what? I think we talked over the end of the segment. OK, we didn't get a, <laughs> didn't, get, didn't get any music. No, I, we didn't hear the music. My book, Ten Reasons yeah, there we to go. Buy gold. <laughs> Don't let time slip away. Call for your Folks, free there's more coming today. up. <laughs> 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free. 800-686-2237. is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't Tread on Meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in at 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind. That is, of course, the Pro XPN toll-free call in line for you. And you can also call on Skype at our Skype name, lrn.fm. Um, antiwar.com is a libertarian website. And I'm really proud that the premier anti-war website on the Internet is liberty-based, not progressive-based or conservative based not that i know that many anti-war yet conservatives. they have such a great way of building bridges i mean they really don't turn people off if they happen to come from the left or whatever indeed and you, you'll you've noticed that the anti-war movement kind of died down when uh, george bush got defeated i i felt that that indeed. sort of made it uh, somewhat disingenuous that uh, the way the, the left talked about being all anti-war and that sort of thing they're willing well, it's to. okay now they use drones yeah so as long as our boys aren't dying well, as long as as long as we can't see it, because the drones, you know, no video of that happening. Right. Right. So anyway, uh, antiwar.com has gotten itself into a bit of a pickle. Um, some of their major donors died recently. The FBI um, actually did um, was was it, the news came out. The FBI was monitoring antiwar.com, and some of their donors are like, yeah. "Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa! I didn't sign up for FBI monitoring." Yeah. So they pulled out. Not that the FBI is going to stop monitoring them now that they've stopped funding antiwar.com but whatever um as the case may they be they probably won't even stop monitoring the dead ones <laughs> <There you go. laughs> just put the dossier someplace else well, those are voters <laughs> <laughs> also um the fact is the government uh, levied a fine against antiwar.com a few years back they've cut staff over the past several years and um and they've cut it in half and the remaining staff is quite thin and the top folks the top two People there at antiwar.com have been foregoing salaries for the last uh, couple of few weeks because they're committed to keeping the website going. Are you? Right now, they need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate. Call them today. I did. They, I, I actually donated in bitcoins. They take bitcoins. I'm totally going to do that, too. They prefer that just bitcoins. just my anonymity. But. They, they, call the, uh, the, the, they call it the peace currency, antiwar.com slash donate. So cool. I'm, I'm committed. I support them, too. Indeed. All right. Uh, gentlemen, we have a phone call on the line from Aaron in Ontario. Hi, Aaron. Are you with us? Hello. Hi. Welcome to Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, not too much. I was just uh, speaking with a, a friend of mine. Um, I'm uh, here from uh, London, Ontario, ah. uh, in Canada here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just, uh, like I said, I was talking with a friend. He plays uh, some music as well. And... Uh, I was just feeling like <clears throat> there's a bit of a communication barrier. And, uh, between uh, and who? I've noticed. Uh, just between uh, me and a friend. And uh, it, it happens consistently across the board with a lot of people. So you have a communication barrier with many people? Uh, no, uh, not myself. I mean, I, I like to think that I'm a pretty good communicator with some people. Okay. So, so tell, the friend tell has us. a uh, communication barrier with many people. I'm sorry? So the friend that? has a no, communication? No, he and his friend have a communication barrier, But he barrier, said it happens right? across the board, and this is what I'm trying to understand. Uh, mm. You have a communication with this a communication failure with this with this friend often? Is that what you're trying to say by across the board? Yeah, I think that he's a really smart guy, and uh, he really knows um, what he means uh, and what he says. Um, but what ends up happening is, is that he gets uh, stuck in his own programmed uh, speech, so he's he's kind of it's almost like he's rehearsing uh, what he needs to say and what he feels uh, rather than actively listening uh, to the people uh, around him. Oftentimes that happens. People have a difficult time really listening and being present when, in conversations. Mm. It's give, something... give us an example. I mean, what happens when you're talking to him? 
Um, well, he'll have a set a set thing to say. All right. So um, I haven't actually spoke to him in a little while, but uh, he just uh, he was talking to me. He's a songwriter, and uh, and I've got a lot of songs myself. And he said, uh, "Oh, I know exactly how you feel when um, you're trying to show people some music, and uh, it seems like nobody wants to listen." You know, and then he said, oh, let's get together again. It's been like two years. Let's get together and, and jam. And then uh, when I said, because he asked me, well, what's the next step? You know, what do we got to do? And I said, well, it's really simple. You know, the songs just make themselves. You just make songs and then you go and tell people uh, how you feel about them, you know. And from there, he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And yeah, I don't know who you're telling. Right um, so the songs make themselves. So you get together and jam, and you come up with songs, and then then they then you go tell people. What tell people about the songs? Yeah, you you tell people what the, what you stand for, um, what the songs mean. You know, it's yeah, pretty straightforward. I mean, okay. if a song uh, is a happy song, you explain uh, about a happy time. You know, um, already. If, so if what? Ask, what do you? Uh, I'm kind of confused ahead. about why you're calling in. What, what do did you want, want to share? Advice with us? on how to uh, communicate better with a friend? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. So the communication breakdown. I guess I have to. I have to hear exactly what that is. Focus in on a laser like that. Like on that. Uh, well, I would say that uh, the communication breakdown is that when he has something to say, it's uh, programmed. As okay. if he had already written it out, and he's just reading a letter off, and he's not actively listening. Um, he's not looking for advice. Hmm. He's hearing for, for what he wants to hear. Have you ever um, tried to talk to him about it and said, hey, man, I feel kind of disconnected from you when we're talking. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's uh, pretty religious as well. Mm -hmm. and uh, And he says, like, oh, uh, you know, don't worry about that. And I guess that just means that we're not supposed to communicate because, you know, uh, whatever will be. Mm, like, well, that sounds kind actually, of frustrating. Have I mean, maybe you need some new friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I really don't know what to say other than communicate what's uh, what's there for you. What you know, mm. what what you're experiencing to him, and uh, and find out what happens because uh, if you can't communicate with somebody it's not going to make for a very close friendship you know yeah yep yeah. aaron thank you for calling in tonight i appreciate your thoughts and good luck with that let's go to justine in texas hi justine oh justine dropped uh justine if that was a connection error you can call back if you want to 855-450-3733 is our number here on free talk live the pro xpn toll-free call in line okay and i think we're going to go back to this free state project article by Kashmir hill and forbes Getting some mainstream press, huh? Right. So New Hampshire beat out, um, had won the, the Free State Project as, as a state, narrowly beating out Wyoming. New Hampshire's population was about 1.3 million at the time, and uh, Wyoming's population is uh, about a little over half a million. So um, now what's interesting about New Hampshire is it's actually got a deep sea port, whereas Wyoming, landlocked. Um, New Hampshire's got an international border. Wyoming, not so much. Now, there was a Wyoming, Free State Wyoming project that uh, that was sort of started. It's, it's still going on as far as I know, uh, right? Yeah, they haven't had a jamboree in a while. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of their big event. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says that it's just basically over. Hmm, okay. I mean, there's probably some, I know that there's some movers that still live there. Yeah. But, you know. 855-450-3733. If you could get more freedom in your life, would you pick up your life and move somewhere else? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night edition with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. So glad you're joining us this evening. And the number to call if you want to bring up anything that's on your mind is 855-450-3733, the Pro-XPN toll-free call-in lines. You can also call on Skype at lrn.fm. Just send us a contact request. Although by now, we're pretty well connected with the uh, Free Talk Live listening audience, although we, we've got new people tuning in all the time. But Show keeps growing. <laughs> uh, so if you've never called on Skype before, it's pretty simple. You just got just to uh, send a contact send request. A contact request. Yep. We'll approve it, and we'll get you on the air. All right. Mark? Oh, um, yeah. I want to tell you about Quantum Vibe, actually. When we manage to create robots that look and act like humans, androids, will they be our slaves, our masters, or our partners in exploration and prosperity? Quantum Vibe, the science fiction adventure webcomic, suggests the answer is all the above. 
As our heroes continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe Volume 2, Murphy collects these adventures in a 161-page full-color printed volume and is available from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and BigHeadPress.com. Speaking of which, if you go to BigHeadPress.com, they've got all kinds of free web comics there, including Quantum Vibe. I, uh, I That's think it's a great. daily one, right? It's daily. It's amazing. They yeah. get, I mean, most web comics don't have that breakneck speed um, with putting one out daily. So BigHeadPress.com. All right. Let's go right to the phones and talk to Ryan in Iowa. Hi, Ryan. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey. How are you guys? Doing great tonight. Good. I uh, I wanted to call and just talk about the situation in Iraq right now. I uh, served in the military in the Army for 13 years. And uh, I was a military police officer. And I was deployed in 2003. 2004 for a total of 14 months in Baghdad, and 2008 to 2009 for a total of 12 months, and that was also in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just really frustrated um, with everything that's going on right now. We what spent, are you frustrated uh, with? Ton of just uh, we spent a ton of people over there. We spent a ton of equipment over there. We spent a ton of money over there. Um, we've helped out. We've helped them. Um, we've lost a lot of good people. A lot of people got killed. A lot of people got injured. Mm. Um, not only, not only physically, but also mentally. Yeah. Um, and then it just seems like everything we've done is just wasted. Just wasted. And You're referencing wasted. like the ISIS uh, kind of uprising that's going on over there. It is, and uh, I've been paying really close attention to that thing, um, that whole uprising that's going on, and. Uh, all of a sudden, it just it just popped up out of nowhere. They just they took over Mosul and just started marching south. And I find it hard to believe that no one in our government or their government knew anything about it. And I'm not a big conspiracy theorist guy at all or anything. I keep an open mind on everything that's going on, and I'm not quick to judge or anything. But this is it's just really frustrating. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I can understand well, I that, especially. The, the, the conspiracy end of it, because it is amazing that a group of only a few thousand, um, uh, I'll say, uh, militants or revolutionaries, I don't know what term we want to use for them, um, that they could they could take over so many cities so quickly. It is rather shocking, the breakneck speed at which ISIS is working within. And uh, the I, I've you know it's been known all along the Iraqi military is pretty weak, even though they got a lot of equipment and a lot of training. Sure. And I think that this is, sadly, every generation here in America seems to have to learn that, um, you know, whatever good reason it seems like the war that the next war is, the government sure can figure a way to mess it up. And, I mean, you know, the war— Or war they can find ways to— give good reasons and convince people that we it's necessary to go yeah. to war but and it, it's then those a, reasons fall apart right but and yeah, look at the result though it takes it takes a historical length of time to figure it out and i don't know like i'm not going to claim saddam hussein was a good guy but i would we be dealing with this situation and, and it's actually it's not that we're we're dealing with it we're not dealing with it but would we feel anything about it? Because mm -hmm. right now, what uh, callers are ref referencing is, is there's blood, uh, American blood, sweat, and tears in Iraq, whereas before those there was not, and that's sort of it's the emotional connection which makes people really upset about this. Oh, that's that's what it is. I think I think I, uh, the emotional connection. I mean, I was there. Um, we helped the people the best we could. We had friends get injured. We had friends get killed over there. And it just seems like it was all in vain now. And like I said, I've been paying really close attention to this stuff. And I've been watching some of the the videos this, these ISIS guys have been posting online. And I, I'm sorry to say it, but I think this is getting close to genocide right now because they're taking, you know, Sunnis and the Shias and the Kurds have all been in this big deal with the country now and wanted to just split it up for years ever since yeah. Saddam Hussein got captured. They've been wanted to split it up for years. And I'm sure you heard that the Kurds took over by Mosul because the Iraqi army fled, left all their equipment, planes, helicopters, 
weapons, tanks, everything that this insurgent group now has. And they're just grabbing everybody that uh, is in the different sect. They're bringing them on the streets. They're checking their ID cards. And if they're part of this other ethnic group, they're putting them on the streets. They're cutting their heads off and they're shooting them. So who is That's it? Is it the doing. Shiites or are they the Sunnis? I don't know who's who. The Shiites and the Sunnis are the main ones right. that are involved in this right now. The right. Kurds are basically in the north. Right. Um, that much I'm clear on. Who's the Who, who are the revolutionaries in this uh, currently? The Sunnis. The, the Sunnis. Sunnis. Yeah, so, so yeah. the Sunnis have been cut out, basically cut out of uh, the government in Baghdad because they were the government with uh, Saddam. And so now the backlash comes. Mm. And then uh, so yeah, this, wasn't is, that the this whole... is the backlash against the backlash. And this is the political pendulum as it swings back and forth through history. And it's uh, it's it's really unfortunate. Most of these people probably don't really care that much but we've been taught who doesn't care um the, the sunnis the shiites they probably aren't that involved in the uh. politics of it all um but we've been told our whole lives that we're supposed to have an opinion about uh, the government because the government's a monopoly it claims a given land mass says everybody hey everybody in here you're gonna get to vote so the people who are the 49 percent are subject to the people who are the 51 percent and mm. And, uh, Democracy, well, yeah. the original 51% attack right. for all you Bitcoiners out there. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, when I hear this sort of thing, now, I also was in Iraq um, for about a year. And it's, I, I just, I keep hearing Ronald Reagan saying, and he was talking about Iran-Contra, where he said, if I understood the mentality, the politics, this is in his own words, in the Middle East, he would have never, ever gone over there with anything because it's just so drastically different. And I think it's true. I think most of the world, especially the Western world, has no understanding of the history of the area. They have no understanding of the way of life of the area. And it is different. Doesn't mean it's inferior. It's just different. Okay. And and I, I you know, really, I think we, we, we may, it's unfortunate because, yes, I saw people die too. And I feel like, I do feel like it was a waste. I, I really do. And also, I mean, equally, you have, you know, the people of Iraq, this is the these kind of like these you know revolutions that occur out of nowhere all the time or even where they're talking about uh you know the uh, the the president you know the, the head over in Iraq talking being buddy buddy with Iran which everybody in America thinks is really scary think all these kinds of things that happen um you can't help but wonder you know is it should a people like the Iraqi people have gone for their uh, independence or their overthrowing of Saddam on their own. And then these kind of revolutionary, you know, these kind of revolutions that are happening wouldn't occur in the first place now because every, right. you would have known that everybody would have wanted it. And clearly that's right. not what happened. Go ahead, nope, Ryan. It didn't. And it's kind of, uh, I, we started it, you know, we started it, this whole thing. We took the, the dictator out of power and, uh, and yeah, now it's a country in shambles now. We're responsible for it, and now we're we're out. And Barack Obama says, "Deal with it on your own." I, I mean, they did move an aircraft carrier in there, but uh, deal with it on your own. Sorry, we started the problem, but you got to finish it. Yeah, gonna... it's a really sad situation. Thank you, Ryan, for your thoughts. Yeah, those tonight. are brave words to say, Ryan. Yeah, take care. And this is Free Talk Live eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Talk to us about Iraq or anything that's on your mind. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Americans have always been ready to defend 
to serve, and to honor those who defended and are defending all of us. So this month, the freeze-dry guy honors and serves Americans with our meat, rice, and potato sale. Our unit includes four number 10 cans of quality Mountain House cooked diced beef, ground beef, diced chicken, white rice, and two cans of FDG dehydrated diced potatoes. 158 servings per case unit. And during the freeze-dry guy's meat, rice, and potato sale, get one case for only $179, two cases for only $355, or get three cases for only $515. And all come with lots of valuable freebies. For details, click freezedryguy.com and hurry. Sale ends soon. Go to freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. Plus, free shipping to the lower 48 states from the freeze-dry guy. The finest freeze-dried and dehydrated foods available anywhere for long-term storage. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, walk I'm with comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make... Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Oh, really you forgot the road. Yeah. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being now. detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. With me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in about anything that's on your mind at 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, or on Skype at LRN.FM. And the sponsor of our phone lines, toll-free call-in lines, is ProXPN. That's right. And if you want to know what ProXPN is, I'll just say this first. It's something you want, if you care about your privacy, of course. And in today's world, your online privacy is very much intertwined with your real meat space privacy. Okay, so ProXPN is a VPN service. It's a virtual private network. And what this does is it encrypts all of your data, all anything going up, all your metadata data going up online before it even gets to the ISP, before it gets to Comcast and Verizon and all those other companies. Uh, and it makes sure they can't see it. Before it gets to the NSA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this is all done, cl- right? This is all done client side, okay, on your machine, which is how you want it done. It uses OpenVPN, If you're curious, how can I trust ProXPN? Well, it uses OpenVPN, which is the software backend, okay, that is really trusted by just about everybody uh, as far as the geeks go, as far as the security-minded go. Yeah, it's open source, so the the code's been checked, okay? Not that we're committing the open source fallacy. No, 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 no. It's actually been checked. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's right, because sometimes open source, like OpenSSL, is bad news, but that's all the more reason. The Internet is really in some degree of trouble right now, so getting a VPN is a great thing to have, believe me, and this costs less than a cup of Starbucks coffee a month if you use the code FTL20. 
And this works for all your devices. And if you use the code FTL20, you're going to get 20% off the lifetime of your account. Or you, you can, can also try it for free, right? You can try it for free at first, but believe me, you're going to want to get on it. Okay. I mean, you know, a lot of people say that there's free uh, alternatives to VPNs. No, believe me, if you're using a VPN service, you want to be paying them to keep up to date with all of these, you know, all these bugs we find out that happen on the internet, all the nonsense going on with the NSA. Because believe me, ProXPN will tell suits to take a hike. Mm -hmm. And that is priceless, quite frankly, let alone forget five bucks a month if you go with like an annual plan or if you use Bitcoin. So I want you to check it out, proxpn.com, use code FTL20, and take control of your online privacy seriously. All right. Well, we've got a call from Moses. Moses, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, that was in honor of Aaron's brother. I mean, the communication barrier I seem to be having with the peaceful, loving, and awesome people in the studio tonight. Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Uh, my sister, my, my brother and sister, uh, his fiance, when they went to the altar to get married, the Roman Catholic priest very much knew that there was a, a, my niece growing in her, in her womb. And so you know what he did? He renounced them as man and wife and yelled and, and said, go to hell. And all of us in the pew started yelling, yelling, go to hell, go to hell, go to hell. That sounds like a terrible thing Brian, to do. I know, just as somebody would uh, engage in bigotry against Roman Catholics by saying that uh, I know premarital sex is a mortal sin, but there's also something very simple to do about a sacrament of reconciliation that we Roman Catholics have, just like I've had to say a num numerous well, Whit, times. I mean, it's, it's really, bigot, I mean, you're bigot, very good at being the victim here. Whit, no, you, you may not. I'm not I want a chance to talk. Let Mark get attacked. Go and ahead, Mark. Whit, Whit, you, you Mark. love being uh, the victim. Right. But you're, you, you I mean, the fact is, Brian doesn't you like laugh. Christianity at all. It's not that he's you pointing out you Roman Catholics. What's up? at that bigotry minister, but may I respond well, to something? Well, the fact is, is, I've been very tonight. damaged by yes. my Christian upbringing, Wit. I'm sorry about that. But I when when really people tell me I'm going to go to hell if I don't ask for forgiveness I when I was born sinful, it it really hell. creates a bit of a uh, like a real problem in my home, in my head, and I'm what sorry that that's the case. to defend you against an harassing caller, Mark. Do you What's remember that? Against an harassing caller named Dave, I defended you and said, I think Dave's a piece of – for uh, slamming you for the worst thing you ever did in your life as if it should stick with you for the rest of your life. I said I forgive you even for the smears against me. But may I respond to Brian's ludicrous remark about – I happen to Do you have guys, an issue you well, want to talk I, I, about? Or I'm, I'm open to hearing what he has to say. I just said, Stephanie. Go Mag, ahead. Go sure. Speak freely. Brian said something. I think a bunch of guys dressed in black burqas, planting a, a black flag in the middle of Mosul, and uh, they are call themselves the Islamic State of Islamic State of Syria, and they soon wanted to be Iraq and the rest of the Middle East. That also happened to think that Jews have no right to exist and would love to wipe Israel off the face of the earth are inferior by definition, and they're a, a danger to Western civilization, not to mention everybody that wants to live free in a free state in the Middle East or anywhere on planet Earth, for that matter. Okay, could, could, can I respond to that? Can, yeah, let Brian, yeah, go ahead. All right, okay, James, gotcha. Can I respond to that? As someone who has hung out with a lot of people that wore black burqas, um, and as someone I'm who wore or someone, oh, 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 well, I'm talking. I, 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 I no, wore a gigantic. I had a gigantic star of David that I wore around uh -huh. my neck. They had no right. problem whatsoever with the fact that I was a Jew. In fact, you know, I I, I was good friends with a couple of. Uh, Did I say, a couple am I talking about those guys or am I talking about ISIS? Hold on, Brian. Go ahead, Islamic Brian. Go ahead. Well, what all right, but but about? you see, you have a problem Which with Mark painting about? a broad brush. You have a problem with me painting a broad brush, and now no, you're painting with a broad brush. I'm not talking about everybody in in the Middle East. I'm talking about the guys that planted a black flag, a couple thousand strong that just took over a city of two million people. Okay, what do you want to do about it? Okay, but who created that problem? Who culture. created that problem? You heard oh, you heard oh from two God. veterans tonight Ooh. that said that uh -huh. the American soldiers that created that problem, that, or that not the soldiers, but let's no, say American foreign policy created this ludicrous. issue. I'm sorry. That's What's that? Why you just heard two veterans tell he's you not, that Brian, we, he's not listening to yeah, you. I know. That's the problem. I know. Yeah. It's but, really hard to have a you've, conversation. You've with got Moses. two veterans who told you tonight that were actually in Iraq instead of you sitting there in Arizona, who told you that. The American foreign policy is what created this problem. Of course. 
Okay. And all the problems that I ever did in this world, I blame on me, not on uh, uh, You seem to blame it on the hosts of Free like... Talk Live. Thanks for the call, Moses. <laughs> wow. That's, we're done. It's actually Moshe. <laughs> did you have anything else you wanted to say on that, or should we go no, back to no, the No, 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 Th- no. I, I think the veterans spoke tonight, and that's the opinion everybody keeps looking for, because they always say, well, were you over there? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was. So was Ryan, who called earlier, who bravely came out and said, we made this mess, referring the we meaning, you know, American foreign policy. Yeah. Okay? And I, I said American soldiers. I don't mean that. I mean American foreign policy. That's what I'm going to say. Okay? And if, if a person doesn't want to accept that, don't accept it. But the people who are actually there, no. Okay? And a lot of, a lot of my quote-unquote friends that were in the military with me will tell you the same thing, that ugly things were done over there, that it was none of our business to be over there. Uh, American presidents in the past who had a moment of honesty will tell you we had no business being over there at any given time, not just recently, 20, 30 years ago. Take your pick. People know, and nobody has an understanding of what's going on over here. Now, I mean, James is talking about, you know, oh, uh, you know, how, how Islam wants to wipe out the Jews and the Christians. Look, let me tell you something about Islam. Let me, let me explain this. One of the, perhaps the third holiest site, definitely in the top five, okay, of holy sites in the Middle East. One is that it's the Dome of the Rock. There's an unfortunate problem with where the Dome of the Rock is, and that's supposedly where Abraham sacrificed or was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. Okay? It's exactly where the third temple that Christians and Jews both want to build is supposed to stand. And so that means that at some point, somebody's going to have to build something there that's not Islamic, but right now it's under Islamic control. And it's very holy to them. You go touching that, you're in trouble. In fact, there's already in 1995, a Christian went over there and tried to bomb it. He he, he went on a suicide run to try and bomb that, to bring bring Christ closer, you know, his second coming closer, so that they could build the third temple so it could happen. Not every Christian thinks that way, no doubt. Okay, but there are plenty that do. Just like and not so, every Muslim think. I mean, because there's a lot of right. people who would say, oh, Muslim suicide bombers. No, this is the role exactly. Reversal. But you've got an entire faith that really is on the edge of its seat, just waiting for somebody to want to build that third temple. And they know it's going to come at the cost of their holy land. Okay, so if you want to wonder why they're a little edgy, gee, I wonder why. Because they know at some point there are millions of people on planet Earth that are just ready to engage in violence against them. But this is the thing. Nobody knows about the history of that area over there. Nobody has a clue. Well, they, this, they just, they all they pay attention to is foreign policy that's been around for maybe 50 years at best when this is a thousands-year-old conflict. Well, this was, uh, currently, it's a conflict between the Sunnis and the Shiites in sure. Iraq, which, um, you know, you've got these three different factions going on with uh, the Kurds caught in the middle. And the, before... Bush went in. He got had to get, uh, you know, basically Turkey to say yes, we can fly. You can fly big old planes out of our uh, airports. And in order to do that, he had to say to Turkey, "Look, we will not allow a Kurdistan, um, a you know, a, a, a Kurdish country." And that set the die. It for the whole war to fail. Yeah. The whole the whole conflict. The whole yeah. reason for it was a disaster from the very beginning. And. You know, the, the answer isn't when you see something bad in the world, let's go kill those people. Uh, you know, look, if Iraq can't figure out handle how to handle a couple of thousand dudes with, uh, uh, you know, handheld rocket propelled grenades, then they don't deserve to, to survive. Hope Sorry. for humanity, Free Talk Live. Want to know the secret to success, kid? One thing, the Granger catalog and Granger.com. Okay, that's two things. Oh, and Granger's got mobile apps. Those sure are convenient. Three things to succeed. Hey, and 1 800 Granger. I know that number by heart. Four things. There's hundreds of branches, too. Like I said, the one secret to keep this place run smoothly is Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Lumber Liquidator's low flooring prices just got even lower with the Buy More, Save More sale on now. Save $100, $300, even $500. The more you buy, the more you save on over 300 varieties of laminate, hardwood, and more. Save on striking and durable bamboo, including easy-to-install solid-click strand bamboo for just $219 a square foot. That's 37% less than other flooring stores. Go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Plus, get special 15-month financing. But hurry, this sale ends June 17th. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, June 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.72 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,277 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $567. Antiwar.com reports a U.S. drone strike destroyed a car in the Shabwa province in southern Yemen yesterday, killing all five people within. One of the slain was identified as Masad al-Habashi, a supposed leader in the al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Like most leaders killed in the drone strikes, Habashi had never before been mentioned by officials as a top threat, or indeed mentioned at all prior to the announcement of his death, and it is totally unclear what position he held. The other four people killed in the attack were totally unidentified and were notably not even labeled suspects by Yemeni officials, something they usually do as a matter of course. Whether this suggests they know the identities of the others or not remains unclear. U.S. drone strikes have become increasingly common in Yemen in recent months, as it remains one of the few countries whose leaders publicly endorse the attacks and ignore the growing complaints of civilian deaths. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. CNN reports Afghans have finished casting their ballots to pick a president in the runoff election between former cabinet ministers. Saturday's runoff between former foreign affairs minister Abdullah Abdullah and former finance minister Ashraf Ghani went on despite incidents of violence. Afghan Deputy Interior Minister General Mohammed Ayub Salanji said 10 Afghan soldiers, 14 civilians, and 19 insurgents were killed in a day that saw nearly 150 attacks throughout the country. Salanji said more than 60 Afghan troops and 41 civilians were injured in those attacks, as were 10 insurgents. Even though the day was marked by violence, the International Security Assistance Force still lauded the election as a security success. Reuters adds, in the province of Wardak, where militants used districts under their control to launch attacks on the capital, streets and polling stations were mostly empty, save for election staff and their observers. It was a scene repeated across rural Afghanistan in the second round of a presidential election that aims to transfer power peacefully for the first time in the country's tumultuous history. To many residents in Wardak, where rockets hit near the government's compound and clashes broke out with insurgents on Saturday, Saturday, voting was not worth the risk of losing their lives. Voters in Afghanistan have their fingers inked to show that they have voted, and the Interior Ministry said at least 11 voters in rural Afghanistan had their fingers cut off by Taliban militants as punishment for voting. Officials said more than 7 million people out of the 12 million eligible voters took part in the vote across the country, roughly the same as in the first round in April. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. 
Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports Pakistani warplanes have launched a major flurry of airstrikes against targets in Data Kel in North Waziristan, with officials putting the overall death toll in the strikes at 150, labeling them all foreign terrorists. The strikes destroyed between six and eight houses in the area, beginning overnight and continuing into the morning. Officials say ethnic Uzbeks were the primary targets. The Uzbeks are being targeted based on the report in the wake of recent Karachi airport attacks in which the Pakistani Taliban claimed to be coordinating with the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan. Massive non-specific death tolls are very common for Pakistani military operations against the nation's tribal areas and while they are almost always followed in the days to come with the reports of civilian deaths, the military generally sticks to its initial story, identifying all the victims as terrorists. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Tides are caused by the moon. The moon's gravitational pull also sucks up the feces and urine of the ocean floor, dumping it in the intertidal zones. The tide goes out, revealing pus-filled cysts known as tide pools, while the moon itself remains hypocritically pristine. Crabs are one of the many disgusting denizens of intertidal pools. They feed on feces and corpses with their demonic mouths, scuttling hither and thither. They compete relentlessly for the juiciest excrement. Finding a walrus turd is truly nirvana for these abhorrent beasts. After accumulating too much filth to move, crabs bathe themselves in the ocean. Waste floods off the crab's exoskeleton and back into the tide pools as the cycle of shit begins anew. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is the number to call if you have something on your mind and you'd like to talk to us about it tonight. You can also call us on Skype at lrn.fm. And by the way, Free Talk Live is seven nights a week, as we mentioned before at the beginning of the first hour of the show. Every single night we do a show from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can find archives of our old shows over at freetalklive.com. Actually, if you go to the subdomain archives.freetalklive.com, you'll find thousands of hours of content for free of Free Talk Live going all the way back to 2006. It's probably a challenge, like if you start from the beginning, <laughs> can you get caught up all the way up to today? I don't know if anyone's ever done it. But I don't know what the point would be. I mean, you can come in on Free Talk Live any old time. And, yeah. um, you know, if you want to go spot check what things were like back, you know, five years ago, in 10 years ago, I think you can find uh, archives from back that far. You could do that. And certainly we've the hosts have changed their opinions throughout time. And that's kind of interesting to hear. I think that Ian's voice has... Uh, has matured, and a lot of people think that's interesting. So, you know, there it is, archives.freetalklive.com. All right. Now, we started off the show tonight talking about this article in Forbes about the Free State Project, which is kind of a pet favorite project of ours. And uh, this has been written about by Kashmir Hill. And so for our listeners who are just joining us, could you just recap what we've talked about so far in this article, Mark? Yeah, this is from Forbes.com. And as you said, Kashmir Hill. And essentially what it's doing is just saying that uh, the Free State Project is a project to move 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to New Hampshire. And that right now, 13 years later, there are over 2,000 Free Staters scattered around New Hampshire. And the petition is now about 4,000 signatures short of triggering the full move. The concentration of Free Staters is highest in New Hampshire twice a year during the group's two annual gatherings. A, I don't know how to say this word, 
Bacchanalian. Oh, Bacchanalian. Yeah, Bacchanalian. It means yeah. like a like yes. a debaucherous um, party. I, I'll say this is the first inaccuracy. I wouldn't call pork fest Bacchanalian. No, I honestly wouldn't either. <laughs> I mean, I, I've read this article. It was pretty good, but that We've was seen Bacchanalian. Yeah, Bacchanalian, of course, it. is in reference to <laughs> Bacchus, the god of uh, eroticism and right. You got to have lots of wine, um, orgies, yeah. and. Yeah, pretty much there. That's yeah, yeah, that that's about covers it. And uh, that's not what um, Pork Fest is. But well, anyway. Speaking of Bacchanalian, we actually have got a call on the line on Skype, actually, from Hung Like Jesus. Oh, God. Hi, Hung Like Jesus. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Um, hey, uh, Stephanie. Um, hold on for one second. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I called in last week, um, and I was uh, – at the beginning of the call, I uh, – I had addressed an issue that um, that had concerned me, and it just happened again tonight. And, and they explained to me, Mark and Ian explained to me that you know they couldn't, and Johnny Ray was there as well, that they couldn't uh, uh, ban this person that called and calls and just you know just absolutely. If his calls were entertaining, it would be something different. But he just he has no interest in listening to anybody, and oh, just wants to. Are spout. you talking about Moses or AKA yeah. James? Yeah, or when, and all, yeah. all he's interested in is spouting, and it's not even interesting. Yeah, it's it's really hard to make any kind of connection or have a conversation that goes two ways. I'll tell you. Yeah, and, and, and to me, um, you know, being a longtime listener, I um, I find it, I find it, I find it uh, that caller is just um, um, uh, it's, it's not it's not good radio at all. Mm. Well, we did a poll on the in the Amplifier um, forum uh, the, on Facebook. It's the Amplifier you know, page or whatever, and it's a closed group. You have to be an FTL um, or LRN.FM amplifier. And we asked the folks there what they thought we should do about uh, James, aka Wit. And the majority said that you know a ban just did not pass uh, as far as uh, even a 50-50 vote. Now, I don't know that we would have done it, but I just wanted to see what people thought. And there certainly are people that say, look, I pause the, uh, you know, I, I mute the podcast or I mute whatever. Yeah, and they fast forward or whatever. They, tune out or they whatever. say it. Uh, there's no doubt about it uh, uh, that, you know, he's just too much for him. Others say that sometimes he brings things to the, the table that they find interesting and other people just like us Some to, people uh, just like it when you freak out on him and yep. you start yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the sad part is, is the guy's nearly become essentially a like a like a pro wrestling heel. Uh, you know, they, <laughs> I mean, he's you know, we take him up to the top ropes, throw him on out on the mat. He's <laughs> definitely acting like a pro. Re- I mean, he's acting because pro wrestlers act. They they pretend when they're out there. He this guy's definitely pretending. Wait, Brian, you mean it's not all spontaneous? Are you saying that wrestling oh. isn't real? Wrestling is fake. As a, re- <laughs> as a one-time wrestling fan, wrestling is fake, and so is James from Arizona. Uh, but I give him credit for being. Uh, Stay, staying in character so well for so long. Well, to me, it's just, um, and you know, and I, I even suggested to Mark and Ian and Johnny Ray that uh, maybe if not a complete ban, just like a limited, limited to one night, maybe a Friday. You night. know, this is an interesting issue because, fr- so Free Talk Live is a show where people can call in about yeah, anything. Yes. I didn't start the show. You, you and Ian, <laughs> Mark, you and Ian started it ten years ago, and that's always been. How free talk lit? The live name is. is a little bit of a uh, little limiting, right? You know, well, that's that's your show. I mean, that's what you, what the show is about, and I respect that. You know, uh, I don't like to take abuse, and I do kind of consider yeah. some people abusive callers that just don't have anything to say except insults. And right. life is too short for that. However, it is kind of the policy of Free Talk Live to just to take every call at least for a little bit. And so and I don't know even know if a ban would really work because people could always call in and, as a different name or they could call from a different number. I mean, like, how would we actually enforce that? So to me, I, you know, I don't really see banning it really as a solution, um, but well, it's hard to say what is the solution. <laughs> Well, I'm just uh, I'm just a concerned listener, and I just uh, I just don't I <laughs> truly don't, you, like, uh, <laughs> I truly yes. don't like uh, yeah yeah I, I agree, agree with Hung like, like Jesus. I think it is kind of bad radio, but what can we do, right? Yeah, and um, before I go, I want to say, Stephanie, I still absolutely love you to death. Brian is no, uh, I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you a lot. Oh, thank you, Hung. I appreciate your call tonight. <laughs> you know, I I heard his call earlier in the week about. Racism, and you guys talked talked about it for nearly an hour. Yeah, so and really I, I really enjoyed that conversation because um, it's so rare that you can have like a real conversation about 
racism in America. And it's really difficult because oftentimes people, you know, they'll plant their petard and they'll fight on one side or the other and whatever it is. And I just thought it was funny because... Like there were all these white people calling in and saying, yeah, racism doesn't exist. And then he's <laughs> online. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it's it's funny how people are like biased and don't know that they're biased, you know, and it's no fault of theirs. Mark, I actually, you know, maybe we could just bring this up real quick before we go to some other calls. But do you remember there was a video we watched? I can't remember if we played it on the air or not, but it was this video of like a room full of white people and there was a reporter interviewing them about what they thought about racism. Right, this was from and The Daily Show. All of them, all the white people were basically like uncomfortable talking about race. Yep. They were like, uh, no, we don't talk about that. It does racism, does racism exist? No, no, of course not. We're in a post-racial society. Everything's fine. And then they took a room full of black people and they're like, of course it exists. <laughs> you know, it's like most people are, you know, discriminate and treat us differently. And so- it, I think maybe that piece was satire, but to oh, a certain I think most extent, pe- most white people don't want racism to exist. So yeah, therefore, they're uncomfortable. Just the best way they figure to it. handle that is to talk about it less. Whereas, but it um, doesn't go away if you don't talk about it. And, and I don't I, think we would say that. Look, the laws, laws, laws don't discriminate. And as a matter of fact, if there are laws that discriminate, it would be like federal government laws that give preference to minority businesses or something like that, essentially what we, people would put under the umbrella of affirmative action. But what you need to look at is you need to look at the way, how does the judicial system work and who is it convicting? Um, you know, what's, who's law enforcement picking up for crimes? And you would say that disproportionately it's black. So it's really, it's a difficult situation. I don't know how do we get from here to there. Morgan Freeman is a, a black man. Um, and he With an is, amazing voice. Yeah. Uh, you know, very famously quoted as saying, look, you just ignore this and at some point or another it'll go away. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, I, I a lot of people bring this up. Uh, this is a point I'd like to bring up quick where they say, well, affirmative action. Now it's reverse racism. Now it's, yeah. you know, everything's pro-blacks and all that. But what about E-Verify? All of that is designed to work against, uh, you know, Mexicans, in my opinion. Mm. And those are laws on the books, you know, new ones. So, no, not all laws are pro-minority. In fact, most of them are still the opposite. Mm. And what about credit reporting? They yeah. have those high minority areas where they can deduce whether you're black from the neighborhood you yeah, live in. We're it's all scary screwed. stuff. This is Free Talk Live. Does racism still exist? You can call about that or anything else that's on your mind. 855-450 free Free Talk Live. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence? as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? 
Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. The show is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Sunday night edition with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call us and bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733 or on Skype at LRN. Dot fm and have you checked out cam.freetalklive.com you can actually watch us in the studio if you want to see what we look like or see what we're doing uh, and you can also chat with other listeners there cam.freetalklive.com expresscoin.com it's the best way to get bitcoins you just go there to expresscoin.com and uh, you start a ticket it's very easy the, the website's so easy to use and it's fast and it's convenient and completely legal um, but Mark, how do I get Litecoins and Doge? Well, they they haven't. I don't believe they've trotted out Litecoins yet, but they oh. can do Doge. So um, <laughs> okay, there you go. There will be also the Doge has trotted out. I can't remember what the other um, cryptocurrency is that's on the horizon, but they want to be your one stop shop for whatever cryptocurrency you want to get. And all you have, you can use a check, a money order, wire transfer, whatever. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. They even have an app there, expresscoin.com. You can download and do it from your smartphone. And they've got great rates, too, expresscoin.com. All right. The phones are loaded up, and thanks for your patience. If you've been holding, we'll get to you. Let's talk first with Justine in Texas. Hi, Justine. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the concerns that I see going on here in uh, Texas. Uh, last year, they had... Um, uh, some kind of investigation, FBI, police department, military, on, um, I guess, on a hunt for internal terrorists. Internal? And, uh, you mean like domestic terrorists? Domestic, yeah, terrorists. And that's what I, uh, one of my concerns, because I see um, a lot of people being harassed. And uh, is that legal? And is is just uh, the police department or the FBI just have a legal right to just push things into your house and do whatever they want to do, break your stuff, take your stuff, and and you have nothing to say about it? Yeah, you know, it's and it's only the, the legal background for all this is the war on terror, literally. Like that's if they didn't have that to run on, the FBI would there would be nothing legal about what. Uh, what they're doing that the, that Justine's talking about. Justine, well, who are you seeing being harassed? And um, can you tell me some examples? Well, I know of uh, someone who works for the federal government that um, that has been uh, harassed uh, in their house. I heard of uh, other individuals who had their houses shirt, uh, uh, their home searched, their computers taken, wow. uh, electronic equipment broken. 
into telephone and computer mo- uh, monitored and just a whole lot of things that are go- that are going on. The the their um, garbage is taken and and things like that. Wow. And that's just a small list. Yeah, I think so, people will oh, kind of go along with a lot if you say, oh, it's just for the purpose of keeping you safe. It's for the purpose of domestic terrorism. And they don't really think about the consequences that that might have for real people's lives who are innocent, but they're getting shaken down because of under the guise of hunting for terrorists, right? Right. right. So how does a person live with something like that? And uh, Boy, uh, that's a great I question. Think- uh, maybe move move somewhere else if you can afford it, if you're able to, or... I, you but it know, doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Um, it, it, I understand it's something that's not only here in Texas, it's in other states also. Yeah, uh, in, in fact, there's. A, I got a, a story that I had brought in where they were doing an, an independent study on these shakedowns of people for domestic terrorism, and out of 400, only three were seen as something that could have even been a problem, that could have been a, a potential terrorism, and the word is potential. Wow. Okay, out of 400. You know, I mean it's it's crazy. Most of these things uh, yeah, I, and right, where where do you go? Where do you well, move to? Well, follow the money. I mean, it's uh, they must be getting grants from the federal mm-hmm. government to like search for domestic terrorists and then they gin up all this fear of, "Oh, we got to keep people safe from the terrorists," but they're really creating the problem themselves that there's not actually a problem. Uh, I don't know, Justine, what about leaving the country? Have you ever thought of that? Uh, maybe it'll come to it. Um, why should why should I have to leave my country and yeah. go to another country? Um, I agree with to you. To run for my own country, I'm a citizen of the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I um, agree. I don't have a good that, solution. And the other people who have uh, shared concern, they're also citizens. So mm-hmm. why should a citizen have to leave the country because they've been harassed? Yeah, I don't have any good solutions. The problem is, is when the government does something, there's really nothing to do about it. I mean, you know, it's the it's yeah, difficult. It's not fair. I mean, but there have been a lot of situations in the past where just, you know, a country gets so tyrannical. And there have been a lot of I know a lot of people who have immigrated to the United States 20, 30 years ago because they wanted to escape. Like I know a guy from Poland. He was trying to escape ter- tyranny, Russia, you know, other places. And you know, now the U.S. is turning into that. So what do they do? It's It really seems those unfair. Are th- that's his words. Yeah, th- those were his words, exactly. So, Justina, take care. Maybe look into New Hampshire. We'd love to have you here. There's a community, at least, of freedom-loving people. And thank you for the call tonight. Stay safe support. out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's scary because even uh, Justice Scalia, uh, you know, Antonin Scalia, he, he came out and said the, the very legislation that put Japanese in internment camps in the United States of America, the land of the free, uh, he said it's just a hair's breadth from from getting reenacted at any given time. Oh, my gosh. You know, and this is a guy that's, you know, he's yeah. <laughs> he, he's right there. Most people think, I, I think most people believe it won't happen to me, and they're not that concerned yeah. about it, you know, because in the past it was like, oh, the, well, this only happens to Japanese people, and I'm not Japanese, so I have nothing to worry about. But it's that old poem from... What's the past? The Reverend Martin Niemöller. Martin Niemöller. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first they came for the communists, and I wasn't a communist, so I didn't stand up. Then they came for the trade unionists, and they, I wasn't a trade unionist, so I didn't stand up. And then pretty soon, they're coming for the they're Jews. Coming for, for pretty soon they came for me, and there was no one left to stand for me. So it's really a situation like that. Let's talk to Carl, listening in New Jersey. Hi, Carl. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I was reading an article in Popular Science, and I knew they were doing it in local police departments around me. They have a computer in their car, and, and it scans the tag numbers. And, on a, and I heard you last sure night, you could say, well, you have to you weed. Well, here they could just say, no, our, our computer says you're passed to inspection. That's why you're, we're pulling you over. But I'm reading that the repo people use it, and, and they're storing this data. They've, found, they've solved crimes with it. And and it's like they just go. There's people, not even police departments, private people. They do that all day. They go through shopping centers, they through go through housing developments, and all this computer is, is reading tag numbers, so they know where you and I are at. Now I read it. You know, New in New Hampshire, Hampshire is like isn't there something that just it's outlawed? It, yeah, the, New Hampshire is the only state, if I understand correctly, that doesn't have these license plate readers. Right, but do they have it? And you don't know it. I mean, you can say well, the police department sure. don't have it, but there's private companies that are doing this also. 
Yeah, so in fact, like, insurance companies. Right. right. Brian, didn't you have some story about that where you insurance companies were like basically tracking whether people were shopping at certain malls and trying oh, yeah. to correlate that to whether they had their insurance in one state or another so that they could deny the yeah, insurance? Yeah, and these vans that do what, what the caller's talking about, they're okay. being sold to private companies everywhere. I mean, their van's okay. just full of scanning equipment. Yeah, what do you think is the solution, Carl? Well, I, I don't know. It's big brother and worse, because how about this? They sell you your auto insurance, but when you go to collect it on it, they're going to say, no, you don't live in that state. We're not going to cover it, but thank you for your money you gave us for the insurance. Yeah, yeah the it's, computer it's doesn't lie problem. until it lies. <laughs> thank you for the call tonight. Right. Maybe we'll talk a little more about this. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733, the Sunday edition. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Free Talk Live. The TSA increasing the invasiveness of their pat-downs. They're no longer going to use the backsides of their hands. They're going to be touching Now you. they're going to be grabbing it full That's on. right, all over. And what is their justification for this? I've heard this, but that's I all the terrorism that's not. been happening. That, uh, why you know, do they have to use the front of their hands now? Well, did, the, was there any was there an event? Did they use a certain event where something got through no. that no. they would have felt if they'd used the front of their hands instead no. of the back of their hands? They just no. want to encourage you to go through the new sniffing what is their, device. What's, or, what's, yeah, what's going what it, to be their explanation when they need, when they have to use their penis to pat you down? <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what is their justification going to be then? <laughs> my hands aren't sensitive enough to catch everything. <laughs> well, it's not like you can read Braille with that thing, my friend. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. They, I mean, well, your lips are very sensitive. Oh, you have a lot of nerve endings in your lips. So when yeah. the hands are no longer good enough. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-293-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Warning Signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. 
This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in at 855-450-3733, the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines. Our favorite VPN provider also sponsors our phone lines. We're on Skype at LRN.FM on Skype, although the phones are loaded up, so we're going to try to get to everybody. Please be patient and thank you. Uh, And Mark? Yeah, I want to talk about the North American Bitcoin Conference where we're going to be. That's Ian and I. Free Talk you Live. You guys are. I've, I don't have plans to go to this one. It's, nor I. It's the, your first Bitcoin conference. You're not going. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you never it's, know what might happen. There. It's at Chicago, in, in Chicago at the uh, McCormick Place South Building, July t- 19th and 20th. So it's coming up here in relatively short order. Looks like about a month away. So get your tickets at btcchicago.com. If you want to find out about Bitcoins, you're into Bitcoins, and you want to you know, you just talk to other people who are, if you want to get into the uh, Bitcoin community and begin, say, having a job, making money in the Bitcoin sphere, maybe you want to accept Bitcoins in your business. There's a variety of reasons why you might come here. Um, maybe you're looking for people, programmers. You have a Bitcoin business, and you're looking for people to um, create more Bitcoin stuff inside your business. Whatever the reason might be, it's going to be a great event. So Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me is going to be there talking about all kinds, his new project um, and how they're taking Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, Bitcoin basically funded the start of this. Um, Christina Gorlick from cloudhashing.com telling you how you can uh, mine bitcoins. Philip Filipowski of the Peace Action Network is going to be there. Trace Meyer of the Armory Wallet. All the Bitcoin experts are going to be at this event, and you can get your tickets at btcchicago.com. It's Free Talk Live's first remote broadcast in the Midwest, and we are very excited. btcchicago.com. You can pay in Bitcoin or pay in cash. btcchicago.com. Cool. All right, let's go to the phones. We've got Steve listening in Utah. Hi, Steve. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey. I uh, was listening earlier, and uh, I'm like Jesus was talking, and I heard this conversation uh, a few days ago. I was just about to call in, but it was too close to the end of the show, so I decided not to. Hmm. And But anyway, uh, he was talking about racism, and I... I know that there's a lot of racism still being felt by black people. I'm sure there's a lot, but um, I I contend that being that the saying uh, accusing somebody of racism when there isn't actually racism going on is a form of racism. Well, there's certainly lots of race baiting, and that's what you're talking about. Um, is that yeah. you know that that goes on too, and I'm sure that's annoying, and it also undermines the whole conversation about racism. If if somebody's just saying you know you don't like President Obama because you're a racist, then um, you know that's probably the most popular form uh, these days, at least. Yeah, uh, well, when and when Hillary Clinton runs for president, it's going to be you're a misogynist if you don't vote for her. Right? Indeed, no one ever said you don't like Bill Clinton. Because you because don't like white man, people, yeah. right, or men, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. No one it, that it wasn't said, and it to some extent marginalizes whatever the issues are. Like, oh, maybe I have reasons why I don't like President Barack Obama, or oh, you know George Bush, or Hillary Clinton, or whomever it is that I choose. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to do anything with sort of whatever skin deep on them. Right. Yeah. Those two issues. That's I mean that's kind of funny. I'm kind of switching subjects here, but. Hillary Clinton said back in George Bush's era that uh, it's patriotic to disagree with the president, but here now it's it's racism to disagree with the president. It often feels that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Steve, one other thing I wanted to yeah, go ahead. say if I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was uh, that Whit or James or whatever it was. Uh, I thought that Stephanie handled that just phenomenal this, this time around. About the time that he gets some bulldozing and deciding that he's going to be talking and just mows everybody over, and it starts to get confrontational. Mm. I, I, the boy, that just felt like a, it was way overdue. And I thought, <laughs> just saying goodbye. That was about perfect. I, I really let think that. Thank you, Steve. I pre- I appreciate that feedback. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it's it's. <laughs> 
we like to have conversations with people, right? And it can be very difficult. It can be difficult. Thank you for your call tonight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what I have some comments about racism, but uh, let's take some more calls because we are loaded up. Will is listening in North Dakota. Hi, Will. You're on Free Talk Live. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, well, I would continue to try to make the point that it is we really need to come home and stop focusing on other people's countries. Some of our leaders need to pull their pants up and come home. And I, and I mean that to put a little color in the conversation. But the point is that I left nothing in Baghdad. Those people take care of themselves. And I'm sure we want to go with their freedom so we can put a liquor store in every corner, divorce <laughs> court, and, you know. So here's my point, returning to home. We need to be able to reconstruct our country as quickly as possible because your leadership has failed you young people. They've gone dark. They've gone uh, They've gone perverted, parasitic. It looks like they're headed towards a predatory phase. Yeah, so, I don't uh, even consider them my leaders. I'm channeling Ian here, the main host, <laughs> most of the other nights, but... But yeah, I wouldn't consider politicians my leaders. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but but there's no doubt that governments uh, g- governments really it's it's in its nature to grow. So the expectation I have is is that the uh, the power of Washington D.C. will it's sort of like a, a star. It'll grow and grow and until it sort of implodes on a, on itself. I don't see how it can do anything else. Yes, but I'm not talking about just Washington D.C. What you've done is your local governments began to mimic each other. Oh, you're our kind of people. You're, you know, you're, you're our, I mean, what they've done is they've mimicked to the point now to where they've, they've cloned themselves to be intellectually incested and, and, and morally incested. They think they can construct a whole new world. They don't really work for their money. They just get it handed to them, and then they have the audacity to tell you they pay taxes. And I try to tell those morons, I don't think you get this. I get you took the money from me to pay those taxes. Now you have investment plans, retirement, and, and compensation. I mean, the whole thing's gone nuts. So Yeah, I think you're, I mean, I think you're right. Local governments, I mean, look at just the police forces. They, they look no different. I just saw a picture the other day of some new armor that they got, you know, and I mean, armor isn't on four wheels or six wheels, and it looks like the same equipment I used in Iraq. It was. <laughs> it, it is. And, and I mean, yeah, you're right. They are mimicking each other. Yes, but now, now caution with the police force. Now I have to, I have to use some hesitancy there because I think they're pushing the police into the front lines to take the hits. And, yes, and, 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 so and, no and they're willing to. <laughs> well, yeah, be, because okay. Now what I want to do is I want to give you my list of changes. I don't know how long. Give me the list of changes. Is. If you, I think if your program were long enough. You could start your program out with a list of twenty items and see who agrees to them, so we could all begin to reconstruct. So, if I might, can you give me one items? or two of these yeah, uh, these items? I can't have do time 20. for twenty, but <laughs> well, I, I do have ten, but I'll shoot you the first five. How <laughs> are you ready? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Recording or writing this down first. I want the odd Fed. I want an I want an audit of the Federal Reserve. I want the IRS to go to a flat tax immediately. I don't want to hear any more bitching or whining. I want term limits, not just for our, for our public uh, elected officials, but all public employees now on are termed at seven. You're capped. There's no, you're not going any further. You don't like to get out. Uh, <laughs> mandatory 15-year prison term for any public official who, who begets an ill-intended corrupted event. Nullify all gun laws. It's my word you could have a tank. I just get to shoot you. Uh, I want to cut all foreign aid. I want to cut foreign bases. I want to design a health care in an open discussion. So what I'm trying to show you here is that I am certain that if we did things, for example, no more cities should be over 200,000 people. How are you going to stop community. that from happening? Yeah. Well, here's my, my point to you is this. You don't know there are things coming. Uh, I'm, I'm an unusual event, sort of, but there are new energy designs about to hit the market. They're going to change your world beyond anything you can ever imagine. But you can do anything you want to do. This is, no law or action has the right to supersede the well-being of the immediate community. And, and all these structures are formed from neighbors. They make neighborhoods, and they make communities, and they make cities. And you have to come back and realize that a big city over 200,000, it is designed for collapse and failure and disunity. There's I no don't like cities harm. either, but I think that might be hard to get a lot of people to agree on that. But I, I, I don't know how you... Yeah, yeah, enforcing yeah. those. Yeah. Is. <laughs> well, well, thank you. If you want to talk about the rest of your planks, you know, call in any night on Free Talk Live. Appreciate the call tonight. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. How do we improve life? <laughs> how do we make it better? This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday edition, and there's more coming up.
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. BuzzBox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Tonight, you're joined by me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And the number to call if you want to get in touch with us, bring up anything that's on your mind, is 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. That spells eight fifty five four fifty free. The word free. You can also call on Skype at LRN FM. You know, when I get on air, be it doing my own show, Sovereign Tech, or if I'm doing Free Talk Live, which you can check out Sovereign Tech S O V R Y N Tech uh, dot com. 
you know, I, admittedly, I like to have some caffeine. I need something literally to pick me up to just like be there because I, you it's know, I work so with depressing. To no, do no, these shows. really, I work without a net. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I work without a net, and I think a lot of professionals, and I wouldn't begin to claim I'm a professional, but a lot of professionals do. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> you are a professional. Yeah. <laughs> and so I like caffeine, but maybe there's a lot of other things that you could try, and something you might want to try to get that edge to be able to work without a net is modup.net. Okay, and modup. They offer high quality modafinil. Okay, studies show one in five students use this as a cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including double ditch, double digit increase in short term memory, fighting off of fatigue. I think that's amazing. And the the fact is, is you know that some stim- stimulants do this, and if it's a good one, the ones that don't give you that kind of like weird thing that caffeine does, right? You know, make you feel all sort of edgy and, and that sort of thing. I bet it's very effective. Yeah. I've, I've heard things about um, Adderall, studies on Adderall. Now I haven't. You know, I'm, I'm not one to just go trying to get that stuff. I right. have no idea, and I don't have a prescription for it. But I, I think it's very interesting. Yeah, sure. So I want you to check out, you know, ch- check out modup.net and look into it for yourself. Make sure you look into the, uh, you know, the laws for pres- prescriptions. This and, stuff and is all actually that. designed, sorry to interrupt, this stuff is designed for shift workers. To help them get through sure. an overnight Yeah, I mean, shift. yeah, and certainly there's plenty of reports of, of businessmen around the world, you know, getting great benefits for, you know, using modafinil from modup.net. So I want you to go to modup.net. Okay, you can use the code FTL20, or if you use Bitcoin, you can get a 33% discount. But if you use the code, or not FTL20, I'm sorry, just the code FTL. If you use the code FTL, you're going to get 10 free tablets with your order. Uh, Remember, Free Talk Live, it's an international show, and modup.net, they ship internationally. So check it out, modup.net. And you are responsible for looking up the, uh, knowing the, all the yes, laws, make right? sure. Yeah, make sure you you know your uh, your aerial your, your local laws. All right, to the phones we go. Let's talk to Nelly. Hi, Nelly. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Happy Father's Day to all dads. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anything else you wanted to say? That sounds like it. That's <laughs> all it. Right, that was it. Thank Cheers. you, Nelly. Happy Father's Day, indeed, to now, all dads. You Mark, know, you're a dad, this right? morning, I um, Jack woke me up, and he had made a card for me out of a piece of uh, folded-over printer paper, and it was just wonderful. We don't do the gift thing very much at my house. I, you know, I just prefer. I, I don't need all that junk in my life, and and you know, he's the only one that wants stuff, so. I um I was just delighted to get this. It's probably the best gift I'm ever going to get his whole life. <laughs> you know, a six-year-old makes a, um, you know, he writes, Happy Father's Day. Can't get father on the full line, so he just father and then er, Aww. day. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the thought that counts. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just so nice. That works. That's yeah. cute. All right, let's go to Skype and talk to Recording Master Tim. Hey, Recording Master Tim, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, is my mic level high enough? On, I'll use on the. It sounds wonderful. Yeah, I can see why. You, as good I can as see could... why you've earned that title. That is a recording, recording master. master. <laughs> Conceivably, the single best call we've ever had from, <laughs> from an audio sound quality. Great standpoint. voice too. The yeah. voice makes it. I, I was I was glad to have a, a, a spoken jingle I made for United We Strike being played on on the radio marathon yesterday. But what's what's that? Anyway, uh, United We Strike. Um, th- that's something where. Uh, it started out as, as, well, this is um, it isn't what I originally was going to talk about. <laughs> well, it, that's okay. You can talk about whatever you want. I mean, I was just kind of curious, well, but if I, you'd rather talk about something else, that's okay. I, I was thinking about, um, you know, explaining that possibly using up all my time to talk about what I was originally going to talk about. Uh, anyway, uh, when it comes to agenda tw- agenda twenty one and you know smart homes, uh, the the thing that I couldn't see. Um, or help seeing that they're using to to get people sucked in into Agenda 21 is um, through just you know all nice sounding advertising advertising the smart home. Like I got uh, an email from um, my ISP that you know just asked questions like, "Have you ever wanted to change the temperature in your home while you're at work, or give the USP delivery person a code to drop?" A package off inside your locked porch, or receive a notification picture to your cell phone when your kids arrive home from summer school, and uh, verify uh, your cell phone phone that your garbage door wasn't left open, and <laughs> if oh, you're wow. going to go south, south for the winter, um, and, and want to be alerted if there's a wire leak in your home or cabin. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I so um, just for anyone who's not familiar, the idea of a smart home is like a home that's con- the you know the control, the temperature controls, and the door locks and other things right. might be connected to the internet, and you could access them remotely. Now, the problem with that, I think, that a lot of people are afraid of, is that perhaps someone else could access them remotely and freeze you out or Sounds track, track yeah. what you're doing or something like now, that. Now, just in case, and Tim, I just want to be clear with you, just in case people don't know what Agenda 21 is, um, and yeah. Tim, you can correct me if this isn't your understanding. But it's essentially a quote unquote voluntary um, action plan that was created by the United Nations to allow for sustainable living. But a lot of people have the fear that it is a more of a depopulation program and more of a controlling program. How does that line up with your thoughts on it, Tim? Yeah, that sounds uh, like a right explanation. To okay. Me. Um, and uh, um, see, I looked on YouTube at first for just smart homes, but I could only find just, you know, good good sounding um, ad videos. So then I looked up smart cities and uh, when I put, you know, the smart home and, you know, the smart cities together, um, then to me, it, it just, it just makes sense that um, in order for them, in order for them to get all towns and cities converted to smart towns and smart cities, they have to, um, in order for it to be easier for them to do that, they got to start, you know, um, you know, getting people sucked in with just all nice sounding advertising. Right. They got to pitch it to them, make it something they want. Otherwise they won't accept it. Is that the idea? Yeah. You know, I I have to admit, like hearing those commercials, it does sound convenient. Yeah. Well, can I get this stuff without being uh, watched over by Big Brother? (laughs) Yeah, right, right. I mean, and it's funny because a lot of these technologies that I think Tim is talking about, like Google's Nest, uh, are, are solutions to a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, you know, in fact, Nest thermostats are cutting out to where like people are getting froze, you know, froze out of their homes uh, because you know, because I, these technologies fail. I have a personal story about this. I was staying with some friends a couple months ago in L.A. and they had Nest in their home. Right. And uh, I woke up and I got out, I went out, walked out of the room and it was like really hot. And I looked at the Nest and it was on like heating on, on 90 and this was in LA so it was already warm yeah and and then the, they were like oops I uh, don't know what happened with that let's change it but yeah I mean like things there can be bugs <laughs> in these systems obviously now Tim I, I want to ask you like what is a smart town what would define a smart city or town um the the best way I can think of is you know where where they have you know, all homes and businesses and schools all, you know, converted to, um, you know, just like, just like if they get uh, homes, you know, in, in all towns and cities converted to smart homes, then they also get all bi- business buildings converted to, to smart buildings and, and schools converted to smart schools, you know, um, in, in the same way. And, 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 and then, then once they got that all, you know, together, then, then they'll, It'll be where they're, you know, they can, you know, easily, easily control everybody and and everything. And yeah, so I could and, imagine and, like and if, it's, it's, if everything's it's connected. Be, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's gonna be, it, it's gonna be, you know, um, you know, for them to be able to control, you know, everybody and everything, you know, ever control everybody and, and and control everything that 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 you do and. Yeah. Um, Not just a government, but yeah. like if a hacker could access the mainframe of a town, they could turn off all the lights in the town, for instance, in the entire city, and then everybody would probably panic. And what would happen? Because nobody has a flashlight anymore, because it's all controlled by Google. And- yeah, I think a smart uh, town would probably work. The you know a lot of towns out west are having water management issues. Yeah, and I bet that it would be strongly oh, they focused might cut on off that. your water. Yeah. Well, they're already uh, looking at uh, charging you more if you use more than you know your per household amount and. It, well, Mark, it, that would be more than your fair share. You're taking more than you your know, fair share. Of I've water. lived in a house where it was just me, and I've lived in a house where we had six people. So, which one, you know, deserves well, Mark, more that water? That violates the building code to have more than five people in your house. So <laughs> you're going to have to pay an extra occupancy tax, and we're going to have to inspect your home yeah. to make sure your kids are okay. What if you got? What if you've got five kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a no-no. So, so, Tim, what do we do about this? Um, first, I was just going to say that, that I also seen a YouTube video uh, showing um, where they're building cities. They're building uh, the, the smart cities. Mm-hmm. Uh, also on um, on Govern America on, uh, on uh, Republic Broadcasting, they also had um, right. you know one about that too. Tim, we're up Thanks against so the clock. Would love to hear more later. And this is Free Talk Live. 
855-450-3733. Would you want to live in a smart house? Safety, safety, nice. safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,273, silver opened at $19.53, and Bitcoin is trading at $598.24. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, the Obama administration has been quietly advising local police to keep quiet about surveillance technology and practices, including sweeping up metadata from entire neighborhoods. That word from the Associated Press, which reports that Stingray, a program used by police to track cell phone data, disguises itself as a cell phone company's tower. That results in the cell's data transmitting directly to police, circumventing the need to request information from cell phone companies. Documents confirm the government asked police to withhold information about the equipment and how it works. Nearly one-third of the Defense Department's $5 million budget has been spent on Stingray. Former prisoner of war Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is finally on his way home. NBC News reports that Bergdahl left a German hospital Thursday afternoon and will arrive in San Antonio Friday. There, he'll be taken to Brook Army Medical Center. Officials call this part of his reintegration process Phase 3. It excludes media access and public appearances. Upon rescue, Bergdahl was sent to a German hospital due to his physical condition, but is now ready to travel. A 14-year-long war with no end in sight has done nothing to protect the country of Iraq from terroristic violence. That's according to a Daily Beast report that says terrorists have become a full-blown army, seizing the country's second-largest city on Tuesday. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Sham have morphed from a terrorist menace into a military force. After gaining possession of heavy weapons and vehicles, the U.S. provided to Iraq's military. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY when you order 10 or more posters, and you'll get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. 
and support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Three months from the 13th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, activists, alternative media groups, and first responders are working to revive the 9-11 Truth movement. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, the Anti-Media, and the Conscious Resistance Network are organizing several days of information sharing and street action, as well as music and speaking, from September 11th to September 13th in New York City. For more information, visit groundzero911.com. Deputies from Carnes County, Texas, southeast of San Antonio, came across two SUVs filled with illegal immigrants near U.S. Highway 181 and County Road 211. As police pulled over one vehicle, the other fled, resulting in a high-speed chase. The driver of the second vehicle crashed into a brushy area while one migrant was run over but was still able to flee. The suspects have not yet been located. Carnes County Sheriff Dwayne Villanueva says such activity, especially involving juveniles, is increasing in the region. Most of the migrants caught were from Honduras. NASA scientists based in Houston worked with an artist to create a prototype of a spacecraft capable of traveling faster than the speed of light. Space travel scientist Dr. White says it's possible to bend space-time, covering large distances instantly. The ship would include two rings surrounding the central spacecraft to wrap space-time and travel many light years in a matter of days. The ship, called IXS Enterprise, resembles that of the one featured on the popular show Star Trek. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, June 13th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. good kids now come and get your riddle on this is free talk live it's the live Sunday night show, and we're launching into the third hour of tonight's program with me Stephanie and Brian and Mark the number to call is 855-450-3733 to bring up anything that's on your mind tonight. That's why we call it Free Talk Live, because you can call in and talk to us about anything. You can also call on Skype at lrn.fm. So in the beginning of the show, we got a spate of callers, which is great. We love taking your calls. But we started off the show talking about this article that was about the Free State Project, and it ran in Forbes. And I want to continue that conversation because we just had started to scratch the surface of uh, this coverage of the Free State Project. And I think we're kind of approaching it from, you know, we live here, we are we, we moved to New Hampshire because of the Free State Project, so we know it very well. We've been in it for a long time. But uh, what does somebody who's a reporter have to say who's covering it kind of from the outside? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it is very interesting. And it's a phenomenon that most people don't even know is going on. Even in New Hampshire, they have no idea that this is happening. Yep. So 13 years later, um, there are over 2,000 free staters scattered around New Hampshire, and the petition is now 4,000 signatures short of triggering the full move. 
the concentration of free staters is highest in New Hampshire twice a year during the group's two annual gatherings, the uh, the Pork Fest, which is held in the woods in the summertime. Oh, and that's what she described as Bacchanalian. Right? That's right, Bacchanalian. <laughs> I just Has skipped. she been to Pork Fest? I didn't see Cashmere Hill at Pork M- Fest. Maybe, maybe she, that's just the description that mm. she heard. Anyway, <laughs> so it's held in the summertime, and it is, um, in fact, you know, a beautiful place up in uh, up in Lancaster, New Hampshire. It's coming up here in about next week. A week. Next Sunday, we will be doing this show from Porkfest. Indeed, and it, it's. Can you it, believe it? <laughs> it is. A, it is. It's a delightful event. Whether it's uh, you know, it's it's family, it's parties, it's whatever you want it to be. Lots of speeches going on. So anyway, the other event is an ac- more academic spirited, and it's a conference called the Liberty Forum. It's held at a hotel in the winter time. And she says, I was invited to snowy New Hampshire this February to speak at the latter because free staters were interested in two things I write about: Bitcoin and corporate privacy practices. I discovered that this isolated group has fully adopted Bitcoin and that it's extremely enthusiastic about um, other freedom-enhancing technologies such as 3D printers and encryption. Now, I think that this is pretty accurate about uh, people here in New Hampshire. 3D printing still on the horizon, but Bitcoins... I can do business in Bitcoins. I get work on my farm done in Bitcoins. I buy things in Bitcoins. You can pretty much do anything but grocery shopping in Bitcoin these days if you go to a couple of sites like uh, egifter.com or gift.com. If you wanted to get groceries, I mean, Mark... Should we say, I don't know if we should say this on the radio, but I purchased pigs from you with Bitcoin. (laughs) Yep, you did purchase some meat from me, um, and actually you purchased the animal, and then I um, handled the processing for you. But um, regardless of the the legal (laughs) minutia. Beautiful bacon. Indeed. The best bacon I've ever had. And you got it in uh, in Bitcoin, there's no doubt about it. So you can get food, it just, I don't think, I haven't found the grocery store yet. I think that you can get Whole Foods gift cards through some online, um, you know, e-gifter things, but I'm not sure about anything else. Uh, it would be really nice if you could get, say, Publix cards or Kroger cards or, you know, up here it's Hannaford's and mm. um, Price Market Chopper. Market Basket. Yeah. Yeah. Market Basket's another one. So, anyway, going on. If anyone's listening who owns a grocery store, it'd be really nice. Bitcoin. <laughs> Everyone I met at the project owned Bitcoin and I was and was willing to accept it for goods and services. Of the couple thousand people living there, at least 7 own 3D printers, though the idea originally was to get a critical mass to influence the political process. Many in the movement now feel that the pre- freedoms they want may be better realized through technology than um, roots around the government rather than engaging in it directly. That is absolutely that true. That would be you, Stephanie. I-, I feel that way. Yeah. I mean, and not just with technology, but with relationships and kind of personal, you know, personal uh, network building. Um, but yeah, technology. Whoa. <laughs> technology is a huge part of it. Sorry. I have a drink with an ice cube in it and the ice cube just basically exploded in my face. That's why I sounded so surprised. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, I feel that way, too. When I came here at first, I was interested in politics. I quickly realized that did was not going to work. Um well, I think it'll, I think we're having some success, but uh, I understand it, it didn't work for me. Very and, emotionally draining. Oh, I- incredibly. So at the very least, it didn't work for me. You know, I, I kind of I'm skeptical that it it will work in general. But um, that's kind of what inspired me to turn towards alternative types of solutions for getting more freedom in my life. And I've been happy with how those have worked out so far. So um, and I think that sentiment is very accurate. In fact, I had I have a good friend who moved to New Hampshire got really into the Bitcoin world and then realized, hey, I don't think I need to live in New Hampshire anymore. I'm going to go live near my kids instead because that will make me happy and I can be involved in Bitcoin from anywhere. Yeah. So it happens to people. Definitely they have this change in mindset. And, you know, if you can be free, if, if you feel like you can live freely anywhere, that's great. You know, go do that. The one thing that when I have gone other places and looked at them for, you know, possible you know winter homes or something like that, what I find is is that I don't think that there's that freedom community. If you want to agree, if yep, you want to be near your not. your kids, that's there. I have no, um, I can't, I can't dispute that in any way, shape, or form. But uh, you know, like I, it's that conversation, being able to be around people that care about the ideas of liberty. Yep, definitely. Although, I mean, like I suppose, if you probably anywhere you live, you might be able to find at least a few friends or make a few friends around who are liberty minded, or at least receptive to the ideas of liberty. I think that's pretty reasonable, you know, that you could find a, a core group of friends 
wherever you are. It's just in New Hampshire, you have a larger selection and a larger community to start out with because it's kind of the place for it. Yeah, and, and you really have people here with an added with with a certain attitude because they came here. With this in mind, they didn't just one day become, you know, anarchists or libertarians or whatever. They said, no, this is what I am and I'm going to go do something about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to put and, my and, money where my mouth is. Yeah, and, and that's really live. different. And I think that's pretty key. I think that attitude is really key to what uh, Cashmere Hill in Forbes found here mm. in this article. And it's really stunning for people that uh, that understand the ideas of liberty in some way, shape or form when they come upon the liberty community in new hampshire because they they're like there are so many people that think like me <laughs> this has never happened to me before oh, yeah. because liberty people around america and probably around the world skulk in the uh, in the shadows and they're careful about what they say because they don't need just yet another conversation about how they're told that they hate poor people or whatever it is that uh, that the claim will be and here you can be accepted relatively quickly um, if you, uh, you know, I mean, there'll probably be people, if you call ahead um, and, you know, post something on one of the forums or whatever, you'll have people there to unload your U-Haul truck. Oh, it's, yeah, sometimes too many people so that they can't, like, not everyone even right. has something to do. Someone shows up 20 minutes late and it's over because everybody's helped you That's move exactly in. what happened. That happens it took, a lot. It took eight hours for us to load our truck. It took 20 minutes to unload it. Wow. That kind of thing. Well, so. you know... I'm sorry, I kind of forgot what I was about to say. No go problem, ahead, let me go on. She says, here, when I arrived at the airport, the organizers had arranged for me to be picked up by a Bitcoin-accepting driver in a winter-assaulted red Prius. I buckled up, but my driver, Riaz, simply ignored the car's annoying incessant beep that he put on his seatbelt <laughs> until it finally stopped. New Hampshire is the only state without a mandatory seatbelt law, and the free staters will do their best to keep it that way. <laughs> you know, Rick, can I, I want to comment on that, because I think a lot of people feel that that's not a big deal. It's like, oh, wow, you don't have to wear a seatbelt. But look, you know, wearing a seatbelt is, is a relatively new law in the order of laws in the United States of America. And it used to be a secondary offense if you weren't wearing one. That means when you got pulled over, you could not get pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. In the past decade, it's become a primary offense in most other states. So yeah, what's it's the one or ticket if you right. It's one more reason that that you know police have a reason to pull you over in the, in New Hampshire. Not so. Now, granted, they can they can make up whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that by law, this is one less reason for you to get pulled over, and I think that that's very important. It's not just you don't have to wear a seatbelt. Well, and the, the rates, the truth is, is the rates of seatbelt wearage are the same in New Hampshire as they are in Vermont, Massachusetts, sure. and Maine, which are the bordering states, which do have seatbelt laws. It's just that here, you can't be stopped and ticketed for it in, in those places you can. So it's not actually saving any lives. It's not making a difference in the rates of seatbelt wearage to enforce it by law. It's if, making a, d a difference in revenue for the state. Exactly. exactly. And that's exactly. why it won't go away for those places. Hopefully we won't get it. Anyway, uh, this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. What are your thoughts about the Free State Project? Would you consider moving to New Hampshire for more freedom? This is Free Talk Live. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. 
With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family-owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. It is me, Stephanie, here. And Brian. And Mark. And if you want to call us about anything that's on your mind, from Agenda 21, smart homes, to license plate scanners, to race baiting, to domestic terrorism, we've been all over the map tonight. And you can bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. That is, of course, the ProXPN toll-free call-in line, our favorite VPN provider. Or you can call us on Skype at lrn.fm. Buzzbox Coffee, you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of Shade Grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica coffee. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, it's delicious. And, you know, Buzzbox Coffee, besides being high-end coffee and commensurately priced with the other high-end coffee growers, they care about their employees and they care about poor people around the world. This is a way for you to help people around the world, and drink the coffee you'd normally drink. For every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, Free Talk Live is able to offer another um, microloan to another family so that they can buy a plow or a sewing machine or a bicycle or whatever it is that they need to make a business that they think they can make a better life out of. Because this is the way that people truly work their way out of poverty. They do it with their own sweat. And if you give them the thing that they want, that they're passionate about, they're going to be able to make a better life for themselves. And that's why we got involved in this program with Buzzbox Coffee. So please go to coffee.freetalklive.com, sign up for the subscription there, get your free pound. You can cancel the subscription anytime. But if you drink coffee regularly, get your coffee there because it's a great way to do it. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, and one more time, that number is 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live tonight. 
Now, Mark, let's continue with this article about the Free State Project that ran in Forbes. Uh, basically, a summary up to this point was uh, Kashmir Hill was describing her trip to the Liberty Forum here in New Hampshire. Right. She ra- rode in an agorist Bitcoin-driven taxi <laughs> that was beaten up by the weather to the Liberty Forum and found a lot of people who were into 3D printing, into Bitcoin, uh, and into freeing themselves through the use of technology, which I thought was a cool observation because it certainly, that's been consistent with uh, my experience and also the the shift in attitudes that I've seen some other people go through after they moved to New Hampshire themselves. It's going on here. She says the the driver of the car, Riaz, had moved from Orlando six months earlier, led to the movement through his support of the libertarian presidential candidate, Ron Paul. It's amazing here. Living with all these guys who, these people who hold the same beliefs as you, he says, we want to push back against bad laws, decriminalize marijuana, push for more liberal gun and knife laws, keep a ban on license plate readers. We want to eliminate regulations, taxes, and licenses. Within our community, a lot of us ignore that. And so we only work with other free staters. Well, not all free staters are flouting the law. If one is ignoring regulations and taxes, Bitcoin is a good currency to do it in, as there are no need to set up an account with a bank, which entails paperwork and financial monitoring. Eric Voorhees, a Bitcoin entrepreneur who recently made headlines for settling a suit with the SEC over selling shares in Bitcoin businesses for Bitcoin, moved, this is really strange, right? Like back when Bitcoin wasn't a currency, um, he was selling uh, shares in a couple of businesses he had. I bought them, by the way, both really? of them. Yep. You were you were taken advantage of, Mark. Yes, I was. I was. <laughs> Good thing you had the government to fight for your rights. Right. Because otherwise these unscrupulous businessmen would just just exploit you. Right. The government <laughs> fought for its right to get in between our relationship, oh, and I wish yeah. they hadn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. I won't be needing your services. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So he moved to New Hampshire in May 2011 to join the Free State Project. It was there that he first heard about Bitcoin after someone posted about it in, in the Free State Project Facebook group. Very few Free Staters knew about it at that point. They didn't like using government money, but they were more into gold and silver than virtual currency. I went oh, and it's it's so funny to think about some of the commerce that went on in gold and silver back in the days before Bitcoin. It was just so clunky, like uh, trying to buy something with a round of silver, a one ounce round and make change for that. And how do you do that? And it was just a little bit awkward. Bitcoin really solved a problem in that respect. And of course, with silver, you have to carry it around and it sets off metal detectors and all that kind of stuff. Right. I, I like it and I keep it um, for, you know, in case for whatever reason, it, you know, I, I will pay anybody in, in silver. But the fact is, mm-hmm. is before when I was hiring people to do farm work, I'd offer them silver or dollars and they'd take dollars. Yeah. yeah. When Silver I, is for stacking, not for buying stuff with, really. I mean, <laughs> well, interestingly, technology to. as well, uh, and actually it was solved by some liberty minded people, uh, solved kind of the, what you would call the clunkiness of silver was you had the silver app. Uh, that was made by by liberty minded people, and that actually would you know give you okay. It would identify what the silver round was that you had in your hand. It would give you the the value at that time. Uh, I mean, and, and it really helped out with that issue. So technology even solved that That's as much true. as it could. Yep. So going on, uh, Eric Vore, he says, I went down the rabbit hole and I couldn't stop talking about it. And when you sure did, <laughs> and then uh, warmed other free staters up to it too. Voorhees notes that Roger Veer, a Bitcoin entrepreneur who lives in Tokyo, also a signer of the Free State Project, he's a he's a free stater. Friend um, of the show. Also um, an early signer of the Free State pr- Petition, and bought Bitcoins on ads um, for ads on Free Talk Live, a libertarian radio station <laughs> associated with the project. Sure, you could kind of call it a station, right? Uh, LRN.fm uh, LRN. LRN. is a station. But... LRN.fm is a network, um, and less, but it broadcasts on stations. It's a show. Rush Limbaugh has a show, and yeah. it's broadcast on stations. Free Talk Live is a show. It's yeah, broadcast he has the stations. EIB network. That is fictitious. <laughs> what, is, what does that stand for? The excellence in broadcasting. Oh. Behind the golden microphone. And, the, <laughs> and These are the things he says, but you know, what is the EIB network? It is Rush Limbaugh's show. Yeah. You know? <laughs> anyway, nine months after moving to New Hampshire, but th- this is one of the things here is, is so many people found out about Bitcoins through Free Talk Live. And Free Talk Live is it's closely associated with the Free State Project. And I think that that... It's, it's interesting. Bitcoin, Free State Project, Free Talk Live, it's all kind of mixed up there. 
Nine months after moving to New Hampshire, Voorhees moved to New York to go to work with BitInstant, an early Bitcoin exchange that is that's since shut down. Its founder facing criminal charges, but other free staters took on the Bitcoin mantle. Zach and Josh Harvey moved to New Hampshire from Israel in 2011 to join the Free State Project, frustrated by the bureaucracy and regulation in Tel Aviv. They decided to start a Bitcoin ATM company called Lamassu that's now sold hundreds of machines around the world. Mm. A Lamassu Bitcoin ATM was heavily used in the Liberty Forum, but no one has set one up permanently in New Hampshire yet, says Harvey. Well, that's because it's very difficult to uh, to be able to use one of these machines in the United States. Yeah, there's yeah, I, I have to say it's probably regulation. Yeah, it's all it's all regulation. Yeah, most people in the Free State Project are technologically oriented, and many come from a programming or computer background. The libertarian way of thinking is pretty common among techno technologists, says uh, Lamassu's Jack Har- you, Zach Harvey. You know, I think this is this is really true uh, because I think when you start getting into technology, you realize just how much you know, how voluntarily we can interact with each other and how technology can actually kind of enforce the, the good, the good contract or could enforce the, uh, I don't know, what, what do I want? The good practices, best practices on its own and that you actually don't need government. Mm. If, if you have these things in place, now you don't want to replace it with tyranny of the code, right? But if you have these things in place and you're technically minded yourself and so you can understand what's going on, you find out just how free everything really can be and how, you know, superfluous and redundant states are. Mm, there's a lot of talk about smart contracts lately, which are execute themselves. More coming up on Free Talk Live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pill, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. 
Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. It's me, Stephanie, here with you. And Brian. And Mark. Brian, of course, the host of Sovereign Tech Podcast. That That's is right. Your, your name, Brian Sovereign, S O V R Y N Tech.com. It is a wonderful podcast featuring voiceovers from me, as I am a voiceover artist. Yeah, they're I, actually a lot of fun. Oh, we we have a whole story played out in the in the bumpers on your show. Yeah. That goes through the entire episode. <laughs> in fact, and the, we're playing uh, the, cal- characters. <laughs> yeah, the you're you're Natalia, and at the the end, yes. um, the last segment, my show is broken up into segments, and of course it's a podcast, but the last segment, the climax is everything you could imagine it would be. Yep, so and, go uh, and check it out at SovereignTech.com. Yeah, and it, it's great because we're talking about technology right now, and that's what my show is all about, is science and technology and how it can set you free. You can get a, 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 a what they call a, um, shoot, I have got the, forgot the name here. It's a stated income loan. So back in before the, the mortgage crisis, there was this thing called the stated income loan. And... Frankly, this had very nothing to very little to do with uh, the, the crisis as it occurred. Most of that had to do with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Dodd-Frank, and these kind of businesses. Well, the, the U.S. government decided, well, we're just going to get rid of this thing. And the But there's been private uh, loan sellers who have now gotten in, and they're competing directly against the U.S. government. And the stated income loan is back. So all you have to do is state your income truthfully, obviously, and you can get a loan. Roger Schlesinger from the Mortgage Minute Guy is one of the few mortgage brokers that can make this happen. You can give him a call at 866-288-0088. And if you're getting a mortgage, you need to get a second opinion. Call the experts at Mortgage Minute Guy. You can go to MortgageMinuteGuy.com. They just recently did redid the website. It looks great. Whether you need to refinance or get cash out or buy a new home, Mortgage Minute Guy dot com eight six six two eight eight zero zero eight eight. All right, Mark. Uh, by the way, the phone number to call if you want to bring up anything that's on your mind tonight is eight five five four five zero three seven three three. That is, of course, the Pro XPN toll free call in line, or you can call on Skype at LRN dot FM. But for now, we're going to go on with this article about the Free State Project from Cashmere Hill that ran in Forbes. Yeah, there's, um, she came down for the Liberty Forum, and she's uh, written an article about her experience. We were talking about the Bitcoin entrepreneurs that are associated with the Free State Project, and she mentioned Eric Voorhees and the uh, the Harvey brothers with Lama Sue. And uh, was there more to that, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. She says they want to teach themselves as much as they can in order to be free. You have to use technology these days to be free. Bitcoin is. Oh, the- sorry. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about how uh, the libertarian mindset is more common among technologically oriented people. Is that correct? Correct. So, and and this is uh, Zach Harvey speaking here. Um, You have to use technologies these days to be free. Bitcoin is the perfect fit for this this group. A perfect government-free currency with freedom programmed right in. When I got to the Crown Plaza in Nashua, this is where the Liberty Forum was, I started seeing a significant number of handguns. This group is strongly in support of the Second Amendment. The first year they came to the hotel, um, we were scared. I saw a gun, um, and a guy carrying a baby wearing a machete on one hip and a gun on the other, says the, uh, oh boy. A, a manicurist at the hotel salon. We know people can carry guns, but we hadn't seen people so openly doing it before. Um, I also saw my first 3D printed gun that weekend. A member of the Free State Project 
uh, movement, Bill Domenico, printed the second ever Liberator after Defense Distributed's Cody Wilson first uh, made it in a reality in Texas uh, last year. So the mm-hmm. guy who created it created it, and then Bill Domenico created the second one. Right. Uh, wow. <laughs> Actually, he was on, I hosted a tech panel at uh, Keenvention last year. I'll be hosting another one at Keenvention this year. I think you can go to keenvention.info to oh, find yeah, out about I'm, that. Oh, yeah, and I'm hosting the Bitcoin panel yeah, at Keenvention. Yeah. And Bill Domenico was there, and I think for a lot of people, it was their first time seeing the Liberator this 3D printed gun because he brought he brought all the I mean 3D printing is happening here and he, and Bill Domenico came to make sure you knew that it was happening here so mm-hmm. absolutely you know have you ever seen I guess you have seen one in person but Mark have you seen one in person yes I saw the one at Port Fessy actually Bill Domenico did his in black and yellow for the uh, oh. the Liberty Movement colors I've, I've only ever seen the uh, sort of beige plastic ones and mm-hmm. it, I have to say it reminds me so much of like an ear piercing gun you <laughs> I know? guess it does kind of look like that <laughs> it yeah. looks like that. You know, I think we should clarify, though, because Brian and I, at least, are not really, um, you know, super into guns. We don't want to prohibit anyone from having guns. It's just like, I don't particularly like open carry as a form of activism. I think it does make some people feel uncomfortable. It can be kind of a a show of power. You know, it can be sort of a willy-waving thing, as we (laughs) discussed earlier tonight, I think. I mean, and and I certainly, again, don't want to prohibit anyone from being able to do that. That's your right. I think think that you have to exercise rights or they go away, if you get that. But I don't think here in New Hampshire anybody feels like it's going away. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's kind of the the, the differences. And I think a lot of people move here and then they're like, yeah— I'm going to carry a gun on my hip because I can. And, mm-hmm. and often they do. And that's I've fine. done it before. I just, I've sort of changed my mindset on that a little bit. You know, well, it's just like. Guns are dangerous. Got to be very, very careful with them. And my opinion is oh, yeah. only the right people who, you know, are very, very careful should do this. People who are not careful doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Well, that's when I feel uncomfortable. It's when I see someone who I know, who I don't associate with um, caution and thoughtfulness um, carrying a weapon. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll just say that, you know, there's a degree of collectivizing going on here by Kashmir sure. Hill, and it's not totally unfair, but just to say that this group is strongly in support of the Second Amendment, I could take this, I could take it or leave it, the yeah. Second Amendment, but at the same time, what I am strong about is there not being restrictions on people's, you know, livelihoods and property. So guns are property, you mm-hmm. know, and they, they fall under that. But as far as like, you know, ooh, yeah, we got to have our guns, I, I could care less. But It is sort of part of the culture of the Free State Project, do you agree? It, it, certainly, it, certainly it is. So this isn't unfair to say, but I'm glad you pointed out that, yes, not everybody's like, ooh, where's my gun? It's going on. He says, I haven't used it uh, heavily beyond that, the 3D printer, lately. I've been uh, taking memorabilia for uh, making memorabilia for Pork Fest, Liberated Earrings, and Porcupine Trinkets. The Porcupine is the mascot of the Free State movement. It's a Liberator cute- Earrings? Yeah. Oh, cool. I don't know. I'll have to take a look at them when we get to Pork Fest. <laughs> that's ironic. Dangly, look like guess. an earring gun. And- yeah, <laughs> that's funny. That's why my ears perked up. The uh, Porcupine is the mascot of the Free State movement. It's, it's a cute creature. and until you mess with it, explained one free stater. In the, at the Liberty Forum, Bill Domenico, a gray-haired and glasses-wearing, um, he introduced introduces Cody Wilson, bearded, wearing a puffy vest and a, a wrist cast for a talk on building the Liberator. Wilson, a 26-year-old law school dropout who lives in Austin, is a rock star here for both creating a way to distribute guns that's outside of the government control and for his work on Dark Wallet, a Bitcoin service that is supposed to make the digital currency less traceable and thus, again, freer from government control. Wilson talks Seeing about a pattern here. Yes. <laughs> he talks about being scared the first time he shot the Liberator after having been warned for months, uh, a, Christmas cor- uh, a Christmas story style, that he would put his eye out. And about the Arms Control Export Act and being contacted by the State Department to take down the blueprints for the Liberator. We live in a state of unfreedom, he says, to a very sympathetic audience. When I speak to Wilson months later by phone, he compares the Free State Project in New Hampshire with Silicon Valley. Both places have libertarian-leaning techies trying to make disruptive technologies popular. Silicon Valley is more capitalized and less about practical liberty than the free state community, which is a better stake in freedom at the heart of these technologies, he says. I don't see a lot of libertarianism in Silicon Valley. I see a lot of people 
who, uh, who see regulation as inevitable and try to comply with it as best they can. Yeah, I, th- I think if, if you're talking big tent libertarianism, that's 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 actually pretty rampant through Hollywood and Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, we're talking really big tent. These aren't people that, uh, you know, would shy away from, um, you know, closed off borders and, and, right. and all, all kinds of political actions. Libertarian, and things of that nature. but except this one thing. Right? Yeah, except, except for several. a few <laughs> things, quite <laughs> a few <laughs> things. So that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can't like it's nice when people have libertarian leanings or sympathies or they want to they just want freedom yeah. or value that they could be educated then. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so, sometimes they just don't have it all in place. And so especially when they speak about it publicly without really having the principles in place, it can get well, confused. What he Cody Wilson says here is New Hampshire is a hotbed is the hotbed, the hotbed of libertarian activism in the country in, in the world. Yep. That's the reality. Yeah. It's the hotbed of libertarian activism in the world. Yeah, and with Bitcoin, it could be the next Silicon Valley because that's what a lot of people predict. Where oh, Bitcoin is, the new Silicon Valley is. I hope so. 855-450-3733, the new hotbed of liberty activism in the world. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is. We're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. You are nothing more than the reflection of a grim, pitiless world. And this is The Onion Week in Review. Following the Supreme Court's ruling on same-sex marriage this week, overjoyed gay couples in Florida rushed out of their homes to have their marriages denied to them. Homosexual couples throughout the southern state told reporters they were ecstatic over the landmark decision supporting gay rights and said they couldn't wait to wait in line and have their requests to be wed rejected by their home state. And in science news, scientists probably discovered a frog or something. They're always doing that sort of shit. In other news, an eight-year-old boy surprises his marine father during a firefight in Afghanistan. Johnny Depp is now physically unable to walk and less whimsically teeter-tottering across a rolling log, wobbly plank, or swaying beam. And Silvio Berlusconi is transferred to a steamy all-female penitentiary. If you're seeking a celebrity interview, stay away from that bastard Toby Maguire, who apparently can't even pick up a phone to say he has a schedule conflict and won't be able to make it into the studio. For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Very last segment of tonight's program here on the Sunday show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is the number to call, but you got to do it quickly because, as I mentioned, we've only got one more segment left in the program or on Skype, LRN.FM, and those phone lines, of course, brought to you by ProXPN. All right. Uh, we wanted to talk about one last thing in this uh, Free State Project article, and that was drones and the reaction to drones. Brian, yeah, can I wanna, you tell us about that? Yeah, I want to skip ahead a little bit here into the article. And, of course, we posted it on Facebook for anyone to take a full look at it. Um, and it's uh, the article goes on, of course, technology is complicated. Something freeing can also be oppressive. Adam Sloan, who moved from Gainesville, Florida, to New Hampshire in 2010 to join the Free Staters, has been disappointed at the reception of his technology business, Bird's Eye View Aerobotics. A company he founded in 2012 that makes five foot wide, eight pound drones, though he prefers to call them aerobots. The liberty movement isn't that friendly toward drones because of the military and surveillance used by government. I've lost friends in the Free State Project because of it, he says. Wow. Drones are what brought me to the liberty message, ironically. And that's really what I want to talk about. I am... I was honestly, you know, uh, a listener actually brought this to my attention at one point saying, well, why are people in the Free State Project opposed to the this use of drones? And he's using it for a photography business. You know, it's all on the up and up. Yeah, it's, it's all like legit. real estate photography. Yeah, and, and I'm shocked, you know, to, to hear about this, uh, that, that this is, I mean, one of the first things, uh, in fact, we mentioned my show Sovereign Tech, one of the very first episodes, I was talking about how drones were being used to fly in medical supplies to places that... Cars couldn't get, you know, most vehicles couldn't even dream of getting to. It's right. a powerful technology to be used for peace and to help people. And if there's this, you know, I, I get it. I, the only thing I could figure is that maybe people are concerned that the NSA is going to hack into the drones and then they're going to spy on all the free staters or something like that. But this needs to be explored as a, as a very freeing technology, I, in my opinion. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Uh, I think it's a tool, and yeah. um, in the same way that I'm not against, uh, you know, people having guns, you know, like, <laughs> I yes, many bad things throughout history have been done with guns. Most of them in the hands of people who are working for st uh, states around mm. the world. But yeah, just because of those things doesn't mean that I think that guns should be banned um, and, you know, not kept in any, that should not exist. And the idea that you're going to un- uh, learn something right. is i mean it's a special kind of ludditeism <laughs> you know i mean it, i just well, don't get it well like, that's it i mean toss the computers then if you're concerned about drones you need to grab your all your computers and throw them out into the garbage and light them on yeah. fire i mean like i don't understand where that that concept comes from i'm not saying adam's lying i'm just saying that i'm shocked yeah i mean can you guys think of any technology where there's no possible quote freedom promoting use of it you know, because I, I think you could probably use any technology in a way that promotes freedom or in a way that uh, suppresses freedom. Indeed. Maybe those microwave guns, you know, like the military has those guns where they can make you feel like your skin's on fire. Yeah, there's might some be a way, good way to get uh, people off, your, off your property without hurting them. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know if I'd go that far, though, <laughs> but sure. Yeah, they're probably pretty <laughs> expensive, too. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a phone call on the line. Let's go to Matt listening in Tennessee. Hi, Matt. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, hey, how's it doing? <laughs> doing great, Matt. What's on your mind tonight? The philosophy. Um, you know, this, this technology you're talking about was pretty much fostered through fascism. Which Drones? technology? Drones? Bitcoin? Uh, not Bitcoin. Okay. Drones. All right. So you think drones um, wouldn't exist if there weren't, like, military and government uses of them? 
No, I don't think they would exist. Yeah, well, I I think I'd debate you on that. Um, I mean, so uh, hold on just a second. They got these little helicopters that you can buy at the uh, at any toy store, and oftentimes they'll even have them at convenience stores. The little kinds of little heli uh, that that hover. You mm -hmm. can use them inside the house. They're so small. You didn't think that anybody was going to say, "Oh, let's put a micro camera on this and we can look around." Mark, I don't Sir? even think that's even close to accurate in the metaphysical sense. Metaphysical. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, metaphysical, at least according to my favorite philosophy instructor uh, in the college I went to, Dr. Lewis Malden, who actually has a book. Of course, he's a Christian. Of course, you know, Christians are, eh, you know, the outside looking in, even though they have <laughs> the understanding. Well, uh, I think... But, yeah, at the end of the day, Mark, at the end of the day, Mark, um, it was a fascist project well, because... I, mean, I live right here, right in Knox County, Tennessee, right near Anderson County, Tennessee. That's where they built the the Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombs. I mean, did they the have cameras right on them? They're going to get real excited about Rand Paul because Rand Paul sold his dad out, and a lot of people in the part of the country I live in are fitting to make a bunch of money. If they keep the military industrial complex going, yeah, that's and the Rand truth. will not be successful in uh, getting rid of the debt money. Well, but let, go ahead. let me ask you this. So um, guns were certainly created by governments. Governments are the ones that put the technology research into firearms. And yes, at some point they trickled down to the average individual so they could hunt some food with them. But still, the majority of guns are purchased by um, governments and used by governments. Are they a fascist tool, too? Well, they're used by government. Well, they were created by governments, and what I'm saying is, is that I think that tools can be used by people for good or for evil. It's just a tool, and that a drone is just a tool. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was okay. I guess we have to agree to agree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I you know I think the only way technology is really or not the only way, but one of the only ways I think that technology becomes fascist is when it's centralized. Like even you know when guns, when the production of guns becomes centralized, as in the means of, of production become centralized, that's why the Liberator is so important uh, historically, at least it will be. Uh, and same with drones. If all these things are centralized under control by one group or something like that, then yeah, I I, I they can perpetuate and you know come out of fascism. But as long as it's decentralized. Like Bitcoin more or less is, uh, I think you can you can pretty well count on it. Matt, thank you for calling in tonight. Appreciate your thoughts. Hey, <laughs> oh, <Whoops>. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Matt. You can call back tomorrow, any night of the week. Yep, we're on from seven p to ten p Eastern time, seven days a week. We've been on the air every night for years. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah. you know, I'll throw Matt a bone. I mean, I think I think the internet is centralized. Right. And I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that's good. I'm not saying that that the, inter the, the technology of sending data packets from one computer to another is not an evil thing, is not a bad thing. But I think the Internet, as it is implemented, is, is an issue. And there are things being created to address that, made safe, name coin. Uh, there's a few different things that, that are resting the centralized control of what we know as, as the Internet, OK, uh, so, I mean, you know, because a lot of people get worried about that. Oh, the Internet's tracking everything. We got to stop the Internet. Mm. You're half right, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> stop the tracking. Yeah. But separate that from the, the tool that enables it, which is the right. Internet. Right. I, Just I, decentralize the Internet and you'll be better off. I, I, ha I had seen this article a while ago, which I just pulled up. There was an actual there's an artist uh, named Katsu who actually made a graffiti drone. And he was like a very prolific graffiti tagger in the 1990s, I guess. And he got like a lot of attention and admiration because he made beautiful art, but it was like graffiti, you know, it's on the side of buildings and stuff like that. Uh, but now he's made a, an actual drone that he started um, using to, to do his art instead. Sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of uses can be, I, I mean, be you could say like that's defacing private property or whatever, but what if it's a government building? Aren't we all supposed to own that?
Oh, the public property. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know about this uh, this Amazon delivery drone thing. I think it's it's a little little too far out there for me to kind of say, <laughs> oh yeah, I, that's going to happen soon. But I, I mean, but what if you could go? Um, like, what if you could tell it to deliver a package to? like a public location, and you could meet it there when it delivers the package. Even if it came to my house, it wouldn't matter. I would still think it would be less costly to run, uh, depending on the size of the thing that's being shipped, right? Like Amazon needs to get down packing size. It needs to get down weight um, and those kinds of things. It's got some real issues there. But if it can make a drone deliver something to my house, it probably is going to cost less than sending some, uh, you know, UPS employee out with uh, all the pensions and, um, you know, uh, I'm not I saying don't know pensions, if they get pensions, 401ks. And, you know, gas certainly is expensive. Well, but the fact is, is that employees are expensive. For most companies payroll is their largest expense yes. i'm not trying to get anybody fired i'm just trying to reallocate labor in the marketplace in a way that's more efficient yeah that's another technology though that's only going to work in california and okay. like texas i mean it, as soon as you hit winter i can't see these things being practical that's going to be an icy drone and we are <laughs> we are out of time they need some little windshield wipers or something <laughs> carrier <laughs> pigeon use carrier pigeon <laughs> that's what it is this has been free talk live our website freetalklive.com online in 21 hours again are you what if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene.